Are you ready? Are you ready? Ready? Fight! It's time for Effingham Hearts Football on your home for local sports, 97.9 XFM. Let's go to the sideline for the pregame show. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Gaines Field at Mattoon High School, the home of the Greenway for Apollo Conference football action. It's Effingham at Mattoon here on your home for Hearts Football, 97.9 XFM and 97.9 XFM.com. I'm Greg Sapp, Dustin White alongside Gail Warner back at the studios, C.J. Schmidt back videotaping tonight's game. It'll be up on the website later in the weekend. This is one, Dustin, that I'm having a tough time handicapping. Mattoon's home, they have a win, and they're always tough at home, and then you have the hearts that are 2-0. and Well, like I've pretty consistently said this year, I'm not going to try to handicap much of anything as strange as this season is. It's just your average run-of-the-mill Good Friday high school football game. <laughs> That's what it is. I suppose this is the first game that's ever been played on Good Friday. I, I, <laughs> it's the first one I know of. I can say <laughs> that much. It's, uh, it's, uh, it continues to be odd, but, uh, but yeah, I think that there's a case to be made for both of these teams tonight. But hard to argue against uh, the the way Effingham's defense has played the first couple of weeks, and and you got to figure that that's the side of the ball where things would click first, and uh, it has for Effingham. They've done a great job, and I think you know. They're starting to, to run the ball with some more authority. I think that uh, Matt Toon is going to have their hands full with the visiting team tonight. Should be fun. It's homecoming here at Matt Toon, and they introduced all the – well, I guess it's senior night, to be honest, and they introduced all the senior this and that, and now the band's getting ready to play the national anthem. So we're just about ready for action. And another thing that surprised me, look at all the sunshine. This is so weird for football in the Sunday in the sunshine here. Yeah, it's uh, it's everything's backwards, isn't it? Absolutely, we're used to it getting progressively shorter in days and colder. Just the opposite. This year, it's going to be 70 degrees by Monday, maybe by Sunday. So it'll be cool tonight, but uh, odd, odd conditions. Good crowd on hand from Effingham tonight. They're across the field from us, so we won't be able to hear them unless it's something really special. But uh, it's going to be a great night for football. Clear skies, no worries about weather, anything like that. And the football field really looks to be in great shape, Dustin. Yeah, it does. You know, it's it's been a bit drier week than we've had the first couple of weeks leading into games. So hopefully we'll be able to still read all the jerseys by the time this game is over with. That'll be nice. It's Yeah, the, things look good. It's, it's still a little chilly. And, and we've seen cramping come up for, for the Effingham kids the first couple of weeks. But, uh, you know, maybe, maybe – uh, those things will start to, to clear up a little bit. Maybe not tonight, but maybe in the final half of the season. Thanks to Dave Veith and everybody at Mattoon High School for their hospitality. We have a booth here in the Skybox, which is what they call it, the Skybox here at Mattoon High School. And we appreciate the hospitality they've shown us. And the band is just about in formation to present the National Anthem. I think they're going to turn around there so they can present to the home field fans. So, Gail, at this time, let's step away. We'll have more pregame information for you in a moment. It's Effingham at Mattoon on 97.9 XFM. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center is proud to announce their new outpatient therapy. Evergreen now offers physical, occupational, and speech therapies for their patients. If you need therapy, don't worry. Evergreen's outpatient therapy can help you, too. Give Evergreen a call today for a tour. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located south Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. This is the Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota pregame show. Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, your complete transportation headquarters since 1958. Back at Mattoon High School getting ready for high school football, Effingham at Mattoon, and the band has completed honoring America with the national anthem. The JROTC color guard was down in the north end zone, and it's nice to have them back. I think when we had basketball here earlier, Dustin, I don't think that they were allowed to assemble at that time. Well, and I know that uh, at, that's a pretty big deal at Mattoon High School. Mm-hmm. That's a program they take very seriously. Um, so so glad that, uh, you know, glad things are sort of slowly, you know, 
we're, we're a long way from normal yet, but you see some you see some minor things here and there coming uh, coming back into play as uh, as uh, you know as, as standards change as people get vaccinated and stuff like that. So that's uh, very good to see. And um, speaking of that north end zone, that's the way that there's a little bit of a breeze tonight, and that seems to be that the way that the wind is blowing. So. I don't know that it's enough to be a factor, but maybe if you're maybe if you get into a situation where you want to kick a little field goal, you'd b rather be going toward that goal line tonight. So you might just want to file that away for future reference this evening. Hearts are two and zero oh after an opening night win at Muhammad Seymour, twenty-one to seven, and a victory on homecoming last Friday night, thirty-four to fourteen over Charleston. Mattoon is one and one following an open night loss to Mount Zion, twenty-one to seven, then a nineteen to fourteen victory last week over Taylorville. The Green Wave trailed 14 to 6, scored a touchdown to make it 14 to 12, tried a two point conversion and were unsuccessful. But then late in the game, they had a 76 yard interception run back for a touchdown and they converted and they got the win 19 to 14 over a very good Taylorville club. So that's why I'm just not too sure about Troy Johnson's team and what we're going to see tonight. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be riding high, obviously. That's an emotional way to win a football game and gives you some confidence. And so, uh, you know, I, I don't worry much about an Effingham team, a Brett Hefner team taking uh, taking an opponent off, taking an opponent lightly, presuming that they're going to win. That's just not the way they go about their business. And I know that, you know, with some of the other coaches he has on staff, that's not the way they go about their business. But uh, but again, you know, it's uh, I think it's very much just going to be an anything can happen type of season. And while I'd like to think that Effingham has established itself as a, a strong contender for the Apollo Conference Championship, and I think they are, uh, there's there's nothing that I'm going to say is a sure thing right up until after it happens. The Hearts come back home for a two-game homestand this next two weeks, but they'll be home to Taylorville and Mount Zion, so that's going to be interesting. And then they close this quick six-week season heading to Lincoln, so those two home games are going to be vitally important if the Hearts want to accomplish the undefeated season. Yeah, I mean, you kind of look at what Lincoln's historically done and what their season has looked like so far, and you like to think you could go there and win that game. Long trip aside, but, uh, but yeah, you have your hands full those, those uh, two previous weeks. Taylorville, always a good team. Mount Zion. Always a good team, and even in a even in a down year by Mount Zion standards, they will typically find a way to give uh, give Effingham everything that they possibly could want. That's just sort of the way it goes between these two schools in football. So, so yeah, you don't uh, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you have to to, to you know you, you don't want to put yourself in a position where those uh, those are must win games. You don't want to lose to Matt Toon tonight, and then put yourself in a position where like hey, if you want to beat Mount Zion and win the conference, you must beat Mount Zion. That may end up being the case anyway, but yeah. you'd sure, you would sure like to uh, control your own destiny a little bit more and get the job done here tonight. As far as who else is active in the conference tonight, Charleston's the odd team out as far as conference play. They host St. Joe Ogden tonight. The other conference games are Muhammad Seymour at Lincoln and Mount Zion at Taylorville. So we'll keep an eye on that Mount Zion at Taylorville game. And yes, that's that's one to, to watch, and I suppose will sort of uh, sort of dictate how much pressure you do have uh, going into those going into those final uh, two uh, those next two weeks, those final two home games, I suppose, for Effingham. Bet Mount Zion's undefeated, as are the Hearts. So. We'll see about that Mount Zion at Taylorville game tonight. Also, Casey Westfield's at Oblong. Newton's at Florida tonight. That ought to be a fun one. Only Richland County's at Paris. Vandalia's at Pena. And Sullivan Okaw Valley is at Shelbyville. So those are the games that have any area import. And Gail, of course, will be busy keeping us up to date on those. No baseball because all the local teams played yesterday on opening day, so the Cubs and Cardinals and Braves all have the day. I have to mention the Braves because of Mr. White here. So they're all uh, with a day off today, but they'll be back at it on Saturday. So that's how they do that. They always leave an open date in case opening day gets weathered out. But we must not forget the White Sox, especially this year, I think. Yeah, but they played yesterday, too, so they're off today. No, they, they play tonight. They play, they play the Angels tonight. It's weird. They play the Angels tonight, and then they are off <laughs> they're off tomorrow. Why? So that's that's ex it's, no, they're not off tomorrow. It's a it's a it's a four game series. Why well, so. I hate to sound like Tommy Smothers, but how come they get to play tonight? I don't know, but uh, you know what? 
Shohei Otani is the guy I want to see play as much as possible. So this game will get over with. I'll get home and probably still get to see that bat or two, and that'll be that'll be nice as well. You bet. Baseball's back right here in the middle of the high school football season. We're having the final four this weekend in high school football. The Masters starts next week, and we have high school football. It's pretty weird, folks. Pretty weird. <laughs> So anyway, hearts are out on the field and a good crowd here from Effingham tonight. Uh, the indication was Dave Eath was going to let as many folks come as wanted to, and that's how it's turned out. Yeah, the opposing, the, the visiting side bleachers, while they're not exactly spacious, uh, they do have, uh, do appear to have very little room left in them. So the Effingham fans traveled well, and uh, that would be good. You know, it's... Uh, it's, it'd be nice for the for the hearts to have those uh, people cheering them on on that side of the field, behind them on their side of the field, and and uh, like you've alluded to, if this game could come down to you know needing those positive vibes, you might need every little advantage you can get. Absolutely. Last week in conference play, they had a deal. Lincoln didn't get to play because they had problems. Their opponent had problems with COVID, so they didn't get to play. So the way it shapes up this week. Gail, if you can't get him out in Zion Taylorville score, I've had information that that game's actually Saturday rather than tonight. And <coughs> Muhammad Seymour is at Lincoln, and that might be a Saturday game. So you might want to double check just to make sure. And then St. Joe Ogden was at Charleston, and I'd heard that was a Thursday night game. So it's kind of wacky. We'll do our best to keep you up to date. Officials are huddled out on the 50-yard line. But we haven't had the meeting of the teams, coaches, or captains, I don't think. So we may be still a few minutes away. As we said, it's senior night here, and so they introduced all the band seniors and all the football seniors and cheerleading seniors. Earlier this week in Frost Soft Football, Effingham got a win. They beat Charleston 12-8, so they are 1-1 one one on the season. And leading rusher was Charlie Ring. He went uh, 12 times for 54 yards. Garrett Wolf had a 38-yard pass reception. And apparently they did already have the meeting of the captains because we're just about ready for football. Effingham's going to kick off, and they'll defend the south goal, which means they get the win this first quarter. So we are ready to rock and roll here on 97.9 XFM, WXEF in Effingham. And Armando Estrada ready for the kickoff, and so am I. Glad to have you with us on a Friday night. Beautiful night. A little cold, but beautiful weather. Kick is high, and he used that wind well, and it's driven back to the goal line. And he just about stepped into the goal line. Now he's across the 10, across the 20, heading to the far side of the field near the 30-yard line before the Hearts finally take him down. Aiden Blackburn, the return man. Excuse me, Logan Blackburn. Wrong Blackburn. The return man for Mattoon. And he took it right at the goal line and returns it to the 28-yard line, and that's where Mattoon will start first and 10. Very good kick. Just uh, just as far as you can kick it without letting him have a touchback, I guess in, in hindsight you might have rather he had one, but you'll take your chances kicking one inside the 5-yard line. Mattoon can always be a nasty opponent. It's going to be interesting here. They've got a single man split out here to the near side. That's Burton Dillon, and uh, we'll see what happens here. Run up the middle instead by Mattoon and out across the 30 to about the 35-yard line on the first play from scrimmage, and that's Jekai Johnson. Jekai Johnson, and he got five, so it's second and five at the 33. We'll see if we can pick up tackles for you as well tonight. Again, the Hearts are back home next week for a two-game homestand. And then they'll wrap up the season, as I mentioned, at Lincoln. So that's the rest of the Hearts schedule. Taylorville in town next Friday night. Second and five for Matt Toon at their 33. There's the snap, handoff to the back. They take it across the 35, near the 37, 38, but he looks to be about a yard shy of a first down. Ja'Kai Johnson carried the football to the 37, so a gain of four, and it's third and a long one. Well, so far, Johnson looks like he's a pretty formidable uh, formidable opponent in the backfield, runs the ball hard, hits the hole uh, with some authority, and he's gotten a couple of good gains to, to get his night underway. Hearts have done a really good job on these situations, third and short, something like that. Let's see if they can get the stop here. 
Here's the handoff up the middle, and he stuffed it. In fact, he lost yardage. He's just barely back to the 35-yard line, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, they gave it to their up back, Zachary Schick, that time, and he had nowhere to go, and uh, they actually drove him back a yard. So, uh, so Effingham gets him into a fourth down situation. Alex Boffman and our old friend Austin Herbeth, we've been talking about him a lot this season. They drive him back to the 36, a loss of two, so it's fourth. Eh, maybe one. It's fourth and two, but it's a healthy fourth and two. They're going to go for it early, so they're going to give it a go. And their quarterback up under center, Jackson Spurgeon. There's the snap. Here's the handoff. He comes off tackle, and he has the first down and then some. He's near midfield into Effingham territory before they finally take him down close to Effingham's 46-yard line. Nice run by Ja'Kai Johnson. They sent him at an angle that time, Dustin, and the hearts were a little slow to react in a first down for the wave. Yeah, big gain there. Gets it all the way to the 47, so 17 yards when he needed two. That's a pretty, pretty good result. New set of downs for the green wave. Just underway, we're at Mattoon High School on a football Friday night. Good to have you with us. Hearts bring another man up on the line. Let's see what happens here. They're going to run it in. Nope. Yeah, they do run it. And he's inside the 45 <laughs> to about the 43. And then he met most of the Hearts defense. They ended up lifting him up off the ground. <laughs> kind of uh, kind of like, a, you know, carrying him off the field on the shoulders. Kind of a Rudy moment there, except I don't think the sentiment was quite the same. 47 to the 43, a gain of four at second and six as Johnson carried again. So fourth and, or excuse me, second and six. Well, Johnson is uh, like, he, he's looking very good so far, and Effingham's going to have to figure this one out uh, because he has uh, not gained fewer than four yards on a carry yet. Spurgeon stays up under center here on second and six. Hand off to the up back this time, and the Hearts defend that really well. He might have got a yard. As Zach Slifer's in there, as Schick carried the ball that time. Also in there for Effingham, Kalen Reardon. They call it the 42, so a gain of just one, and it's third and five. Yeah, so far it's been Johnson to the right, Schick going to the left, and uh, Schick hasn't had anywhere to go, but it kind of just serves as a change of pace. Now in this third down situation, unless they actually put the ball in the air this time, I would probably expect them to go back to Johnson. There's the snap, going to hand off again. They run it up the gut, and he falls forward. He's inside the 40, but nowhere near a first down as Johnson, the ball carrier, and he got it just inside the 40-yard line, so a gain of, well, two and a half, and it's fourth down and about three now, and they'll go for it, but this is no cheapy. I'm rounding down for the visiting team, or for the for the opposing team, I should say. <laughs> I'm going to call that the 40. I'm going to call it a two-yard pickup. Fair enough. 7.35 to go, opening quarter. This is the opening drive of the game. Mattoon hands off, and he come around in, and he has the first down, and he's loose, and he stepped out of bounds a couple of times, and the official spotted at the 25-yard line. But a nice run by Ja'Kai Johnson. Boy, that's twice now they've sent him to the right side. There, oh, there is a flag here right in front of the Mattoon bench. So let's see what that's about. It's oh. thrown at about Effingham's 33-yard line. Illegal block in the back. Good. On Mattoon. So obviously the Hearts will accept that because that will give them another try on fourth down. But they got the first down. That's the name of the game there. So back it comes, and they'll spot it at the 43. Again, the flag was thrown at the 33. So there was a gain of seven on the play, Dustin, then the penalty, and they'll bring it back 10 to Effingham's 43-yard line. So it's still fourth down. Now it's fourth and six. And let's see, now Mattoon lines up in punt formation. It's interesting that they would, given the kind of gains that they've been able to get and where they are on the field. But uh, maybe they're going to try to pin Effingham deep here. They're punting against the win, remember here. Hearts are moving everybody up on the line of scrimmage here. Long time. There's the snap. Good one. Punter gets it away off the side of his foot, though, and it doesn't go very deep at all, and nope. it's going to end up at about the 17-yard line. I think it got right off his toe. Yeah, well, that one ended up. You almost think that they, in hindsight, would have just rather gone for it. Probably 
if they don't get the first down, even if they gain a little yardage, you're talking about probably 10, 12 yards of field position. At least you give yourself a chance. But but uh, Effingham's still a long field to go. They're going to have to go 80-plus yards, 83 yards. So we'll see what happens. So it's a 26-yard punt from the 43 to the 17, and that's where the Hearts will get the ball for the first time tonight. No score. And 7-18 to go in the opening quarter. Hearts looking to go to 3-0 on the young season. Nate Thompson up under center for the Hearts. They're going to hand it off. That's Woomer, and Chase is stuffed. Hang on to the football is the one thing you need to worry about there. And they did a nice job of shutting that down. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, gain of one to the 18, so it's second and nine. Chase were just so used to getting three and four and five yards a pop. Got one there. So Matt Toon has heard our broadcasts, and they know to watch out for Chase. Thompson up under center on second and nine. There's the handoff, and they run it up the middle again, and he got a little more, but not a lot. Maybe to the 20. And Matt Toon's been tough here defensively on these first two plays. Yeah, not a ton of room there between uh, between tackles so far. That's where Effingham has gone right into the traffic. He got that one across the 20, not quite to the 21. So third and seven. Third and seven for the Hearts at their own 20-yard line. And Matt Toon punted it away, and they figure if they can make a stop on the Hearts, they could get a punt and maybe get good field position. Sometimes it's a game of attrition, right? Looking to throw. Thompson gets it delivered out in the flats, but no first down, that's for sure. The catch goes to Herbeth, but he does not get the first down. It is complete to the 23-yard line, so a gain of just three on the play, and it's fourth down and still a long four yards. So the Hearts are going to have to punt it away. Punting has been a strength so far, though, so we'll see. Although... We have a different punter. We do have there. a different punter. Taking his time. There's the kick, and it's a nice kick. It drives Mattoon back inside their 35-yard line. It's picked up at the 32, and great coverage by the Hearts. And down goes the return man. That's Dylan Burton, and he's down at the 37-yard line. So a heck of a punt. The punter, by the way, for the Hearts. Tanner Pontius. Yeah, sorry. It was Tanner Pontius. <laughs> I had Trevor, Trevor Benavidez written down because he's done the job for Effingham, but uh, it was mentioned that Pontius was the guy when he was healthy, and apparently he's healthy. Tanner also was the quarterback had Nate Thompson not had time between basketball and football to get ready to play. So that's another weapon for the Hearts that they could potentially employ. Tanner, of course, is just a sophomore, so they are looking at him long term. So, first down at the 37. That's where Matt Toon will set up shop after a pretty good punt by Pontius. Yeah, 40-yarder. So, up under center, Jackson Spurgeon. They hand off again. Here comes Jackson to the near side. He gets across the 40. They run him out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. Parker Wolf came up to help, along with our friend Jacob Stoneburn. Yeah, and Ja'Kai Johnson, another five-yard pickup here. He's... In fact, six, get it to the 43, so a six-yard pickup. He's up to 45 yards on seven carries already. So Matt Toon showing an ability to run the football, and the Hearts had a rough go that first possession. So we'll see. It's a long game, though, right? 5.19 to go. Clock stopped. Man ran out of bounds. It's second and five. Fake the handoff, looking to roll out and throw, and he does, and it's caught. And he is taken down shy of a first down. He does get it out across the 45-yard line. So the pass from Spurgeon, the pass is caught out there on the far side of the play, uh, far side of the field. And Eldridge made the catch. Nate Eldridge, number 18 for the Green Wave, made the grab. And they set it down at the 46, so a gain of three on that pass play. And that'll bring up third down and two. So third and two for Mattoon at their own 46-yard line. 440 to go. First quarter, no score. Here's the snap. Here's the handoff. Williams to the near side, and down he goes. Nice individual stop out there as the credit goes to Jacob Logan. Nice stop. 
Yeah, I think that he's still going to get the first down. But boy, it was a it was an excellent effort by Logan. And you're right, just an ankle tackle, sing, uh, a one-on-one -on -one play, and just about just about stopped him short of the sticks. Nose of the football at the 48, so he got two, and that's what he needed. So Mattoon does convert. They do get the first down. So first and ten for the Waves, shy of their own 48-yard line. No score in the first quarter. Next week, the Hearts are home to Taylorville. Always entertaining when the Hearts and the Tornadoes tangle. Here's the snap. They hand it off, and they come to the near side and tripped up at about the 49-yard line is Ja'Kai Johnson. Trevin Benavides got in on the stop. Yeah, Trevin was the first man to get a hand on him. Didn't get, uh, didn't maybe make the final stop, but slowed him down enough for Effingham to converge and keep that gain very modest. One yard gain to the 49, so it's second and nine. Time of possession certainly has been in Mattoon's favor in this first quarter. There's still no score though, and that's the one that counts. So from their own 49, Jackson Spurgeon, who's thrown one time so far, back up under center. And we have movement on the line. I think that he faked out his own. Uh, I think he faked out his own. Uh, yeah, his own uh, t tackle there. So a false start on Mattoon movement on the line. That'll run, that'll move the football back to the 44. So a five-yard loss. So now it's second and 14. The green jerseys tried the thing where you point to the other side, but uh, but Austin Herbeth didn't move until he saw the until he saw the offensive lineman uh, kind of flinch there, and so makes it uh, makes it a little better situation for the Hearts defense. But it was a very good point. Yes, yes. Uh, of, of course. One of those major league <laughs> points. Second and fourteen. Let's see what happens. They're going to run it, and they come to the near side again, and the Hearts run him out of bounds near the forty-five yard line. Jakai Johnson, a good ball carrier. And Parker Wolf on that corner spot ran him out of bounds. It's at Effingham's 45, so a gain of six. But again, it was second and 14, so third and about three now. Third about three, right at Effingham's 45-yard line. Yeah, so far, Ja'Kai Johnson just going around that right end has found a lot of room. Effingham might have to figure out a little different way to attack that. Up under center, Spurgeon. Hand off Johnson, turns it up the middle, and boy, the Hearts were having none of that, and he lost yardage on that play. Nice work as Herbus there again, and Stoneburner. Yeah. I run against those two guys, you're going to have some problems. Yeah, there's uh, there's not generally much to be gained by, by taking on that part of the Effingham uh, defensive attack, and he just gets back to the line of scrimmage. So there was nothing to be gained. Exactly. And it's fourth down now, three yards for a first down for Mattoon, and they're going to punt, maybe. It looks like they've at least got their punter on the field, Dylan Burton, out there. It is just fourth and three on the other side of the 50-yard line, but Burton punted once. Looks like they may try it again. It looks like punt, yeah, nope, yes. <laughs> he about fooled me, kicks it high in the air, and the heart signal a fair catch, and the ball is taken by Parker Wolf at about the 20-yard line. So the Hearts will get it 20, and it's a 25-yard punt. Now, again, Mattoon's kicking against the wind. I want, want to emphasize that. So they haven't had really an opportunity to air it out, as it were. But the Hearts hold again, and they'll get it first and 10 at their 20-yard line. No score in this first quarter. Hearts played soccer yesterday, lost to Mount Zion 3 0, but uh, they had two wins earlier in the week, so rounded into form. Nate Thompson back up under center here on first and 10, hand off this time to Woomer, and he had a little more room that time, gets it out to the 25, five yard gain, and it's second and five. 31 steal the ball carrier. Yeah, Chase Woomer carried for five, and it's second and five. The only thing that got in Woomer's way there, I think, was the fact that he might have run into his own blocker a little bit there. Castillo was out there blocking for him, and I think they got their feet tangled up a little bit. Dustin, I told you wrong. It was a four-yard gain to the 34, mm -hmm. so it's second and six. Thompson's going to throw, and that Ooh. got picked, but instead it is grabbed out there by Castillo. I think he got just enough for the first down. Spot's really going to matter here. Nose of the football is just shy of the 30. Holy cow. So it's third and less than a yard. 
And Castillo, yeah, you're right. The ball got there. The defender got there about the same time. Castillo did a great job just to hang on to that one, quite honestly. He made the catch, and he kept the ball from getting picked because, boy, Mattoon's defender had a great angle. So it's third and less than a yard here. Ball just shy of the 30. Here's the handoff. Woomer to the rescue. Chase has got the first down and then some. So the hearts convert, and it's a new set of downs here for Effingham. Mm, Effingham. This is only his second possession, so we don't want to get uh, too carried away in being alarmed by it, but that is the first first down of the game, first time they've been able to move the chains. Gain to the 33, so a three-yard gain. Second and seven. But Excuse Wimmer's, me, first and ten. So far for Wimmer, four carries, 11 yards. The, the room has not been there the same way it has been for Ja'Kai Johnson on the other side of the field. Thompson up under center, deep back. Woomer gets a handoff coming to the near side. That time almost a face mask. And there's the flag, which I saw. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the call. Let's see. I've been known to be wrong. Well, you saw the official who threw the flag showing Chase what he did wrong. And I think it's the fact that it's not that he put his hand in the, in the defender's face, but that he grabbed a hold of it and, and gave it a yank. And that's why they're going to, to, to call him there. So the, I'm sorry. Yeah. Give him the gain of one to the 34. And it's an inadvertent face mask back to the 29. So they saw what I saw. So he got the one-yard gain and the five-yard walk-off. So it's back to the 29, and the Hearts still have first down, but now it's first down and 13. There's some things that as a ball carrier you can typically get away with, but, you know, like I said, you can go to the helmet with your fit, with your stiff arm, but you start getting a handful of stuff, start jerking on it, that's when that's when you're probably going to draw the, draw the laundry. Hart shift in backfield, Castillo to the fullback spot, blocking, and Woomer the handoff, and Chase gets it out across the 35-yard line. That's about his best game of the night so far. Well, and I think that's the best, uh, probably the biggest hole he's had to run through so far. They gave him a little bit more space to work with, and he rewarded it with a seven-yard pickup. Give Cohen Woods, one of the linemen for the Hearts, a shout-out as he was up there blocking. Out across the 35 to the 36, so Dustin's right, from the 29 to the 36, a seven-yard gain, and it's second and seven, and that was the last play of the first quarter. Keeping it on the ground, games go fast. After one quarter here at Mattoon's Gaines Field, it's Effingham nothing, Mattoon nothing. On 97.9 XFM. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Keller Drive in Effingham will find a car that works for you. Check out their selection of cars and trucks today. ProLube of Effingham is more than just your favorite oil change shop. We sell and install all major brands of tires. Check engine light on. We also perform diagnostic and repair work. Call or stop by today for a free quote at ProLube of Effingham. Well, we played an 18-minute quarter of football. That's fast, and it's still no score. Mattoon and Effingham here at Mattoon High School. Hearts have the football, and it's second and seven on their own 36-yard line. Hearts did get a first down that nice drive, and that's encouraging. Had been three and out their first possession. As they set up here to start the second quarter, they've got uh, Holden Lewis out here split to the near side and Tristan Duncan to the far side. So let's see if the Hearts have a mind to throw here. Thompson looking to throw. Nice check off, looking, going to the far side, caught across the middle and then dropped. Gosh. Looked like they had something working, but the pass to Connor Thompson, brother to brother, falls incomplete. And will stop the clock with 11.54 to go and bring up a third and seven. Connor Thompson had room. The, the throw might have been a tad high, but did get his hands on it and couldn't haul it in. And so now you're facing this third and seven situation here, a situation where you're probably going to think about throwing it again. Same guys are split either side. Now just a man lined up in the backfield to block for Thompson, throw across the middle, and it is caught. What a great catch by Parker Wolf. He has it to the 40-yard line of Mattoon, and the Hearts have a first down. Boy, that was a strike. Yes, it was a nice throw. And uh, mixing it up with the, with the intended receivers so far, Parker Wolf hasn't gotten a ton of the looks so far. And, uh, and you had, he had Edgar Castillo catch a pass for the first time this year earlier in the drive. Big gain to the 40. And the Hearts still had it in their territory. It was a 36, so 14 and 10. That's 24-yard pass completion. A new set of downs for the Hearts, and Thompson's going to throw again. Rolls to the far side. Parker Wolf again the catch. He's at about the 20, and another first down for Effingham. 
So the Hearts apparently uh, have lulled Mattoon into a false sense of security, or they found something that's allowing them to take advantage of a hole over there, and that's a 20-yard gain to the 20. Well, I think it's just as simple as Parker saying, listen, Garrett's down there at the lower levels catching passes. You know, <laughs> that's I don't want to go home and hear about that, so let's, uh, let's get the ball in my hands a little bit more, shall we? I like that. There's no one in the backfield. Thompson's in the gun. Got a back lined up alongside him, but he's out here to block. That's Woomer. Another throw. It is over the outstretched hands of Tristan Duncan incomplete. And Tristan was open. He had room. Throw was just a little too high for him. If he catches that one, he's a step shy of the goal line, and you think he probably gets across. It was single coverage. And you don't want, if you're Matt Toon, you don't want to do that too often with Tristan Duncan because he will go get it. But that one was just not quite go gettable. Pass stops the incompletion, stops the clock with 11.24 to go in the second quarter, brings up a second and 10 in the hearts at <clears throat> Matt Toon's 20 yard line. It's Effingham throwing the ball quite a bit all of a sudden. They've uh, gone exclusively to the air here. It's, uh, is that seems, four straight pass yeah, seems, seems to be working out okay. Got Wolf and Duncan here on the near side. Thompson rolling out. There's the pass. Caught by Wolf. He's in for the touchdown. Touchdown, Effingham. Well, the Hearts, when they had a mind to throw the ball, executed wonderfully well. And Effingham takes a 6 nothing lead. The score comes with 11-17 to go in the second quarter. So 6 nothing Hearts. Parker Wolf. Three catches for 64 yards on that possession. <laughs> so way to way to get in on the action. And now he'll hold. Wolf will for Bo Hefner. Kicks up. Looks good to me. The officials agree. And it's 7 nothing Effingham with 11-17 to go in the second quarter. Back with a kickoff in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Enjoy the conveniences of banking with all the services offered at Washington Savings Bank. Member FDIC. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located south Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. Well, the Hearts changed it up after exclusively running the football. They switched to a passing game, and uh, would they try five straight pass plays there, Dustin? Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, they they got the ball in the air a little bit and had some success with it. We'll give you the rundown on the scoring drive here in a minute. Here's the kickoff, and the Hearts have a couple of different kids in different positions on their special teams. That kick was by Ozzy. By, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to watch the game too. Ozzy Angel. Ty Johnson caught the kickoff for Matt Toon and returns it out across the 30 to the 35 yard line. And that's where Matt Toon will set up shop first and 10. So different kids. And I don't know whether there's a conflict with soccer or just what might be the situation. But usually we're used to. Uh, Armando Estrada kicking off, and that time it was Ozzy Angel, and they had the different punter, so we're going to have to keep an eye out on these different things. But a nice job, and we're turned by Mattoon to the 35, where they'll set it up first and 10. 7 nothing Effingham now. 11-11 to go in the second quarter. We're at Mattoon High School. Here's a handoff to the deep back. Boy, there's nothing up the middle. He was looking for a hole, and there was none to be found. They drive him back after a gain of just a couple. Nice work by the Hearts. Benavides is in there, and also in there for the Hearts is Logan Heil. And Williams gains to the 39, so it turned out to be a gain of four. Not so bad. And it's second and six. So it also... You know, could be that Benavides is so valuable on defense that coach may want to use him there. It's always good to have options. You know that much. Without a doubt. So second and six. Here's the handoff. They gave it to the up back. He gets away. Well, no, he doesn't get away. Wolf wasn't going to let him go. He grabbed his uni and held on for dear life, and they finally <laughs> ran Schick out of bounds. He's out across the 40. They will mark it at the 43-yard line, so a gain of four. And that makes third and 
About two. Yeah, that was Schick's best run of the evening. He's taken the ball three times, and that's the first time he's gained more than a single yard. But, uh, yeah, Parker Wolf grabbed a handful of jerseys as he went by and managed to lasso him, I suppose, corral, wrangle him enough to, to, to keep him from getting any further while the rest of his teammates came and cleaned up. Well, he certainly knows about the rodeo, so <laughs> he can certainly do that. Third and two, here's the handoff. Williams up the middle, and the heart stuff it. There is a late flag. Let's see what that's about. As Ja'Kai Johnson got just about to the first down marker, but it's a hold on Mattoon. And I think that likely would have been a first down, so the Hearts will accept this and run him back 10. If it wasn't a first down, it was less than a football length away. And so Effingham will take it. The flag was thrown just across the 40-yard line, so, so they'll move it back to the 30 and take their chances with a third and long here. So that worked out very well. Uh, very opportune for the Hearts. Unfortunate for Mattoon. Penalty. So it's back to the 30, and it's third and 15 now for Mattoon. Hearts lead at 7-0. Effingham scored their last possession, went to the air, and rung up a score. Yeah, you'd really like to make a big play here and leave them in a situation where they must punt again. Uh, I think that uh, it'd be a real big shot in the arm to get your offense right back out on the field. Remember, they're, wor they're working with the win now here in the second quarter. Mattoon decides to talk it over. So timeout, Green Wave, 10-10 to go second quarter. Back in a minute. Here at Mattoon, it's Effingham 7, Mattoon nothing on 97.9 XFM. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center is proud to announce their new outpatient therapy. Evergreen now offers physical, occupational, and speech therapies for their patients. If you need therapy, don't worry. Evergreen's outpatient therapy can help you too. Give Evergreen a call today for a tour. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Keller Drive in Effingham will find a car that works for you. Check out their selection of cars and trucks today. Never did give you the scoring drive. Nine plays, 80 yards, took three minutes. Again, it was a pass play to Parker Wolf for 20 yards. Kick was good by Bo Hefner, and it's 7-0 hearts. Mattoon deep in their own territory and a sack at a very appropriate time. That came at the 25. Herbeth got in there and also Logan Heil in there to help again. And that worked out very well for the Hearts. Yeah, Matt Toon calls a timeout to try and figure out what play they want to run on third and 15. And that play never materialized as there were three white jerseys in the backfield before Jackson Spurgeon could do anything. He eats a five-yard loss. and Now they're definitely going to punt on fourth and 20. They are back to their 25-yard line. They are working with the win now, so let's see what happens as Dylan Burton's back to punt. Good snap, takes his time. Oh, it's straight up the shoot. The heart should get great field position. It hits at Mattoon's 45 and then rolls Mattoon's way, but it's still out across Effingham's 40 when they tag it out. Yeah, really, that one took a very favorable bounce for Mattoon, all things considered. The punt was... Again, straight up in the air, but got a little bit of a roll and turned into, uh, it's still not great, a 24-yarder, but uh, you'll, you'll take it compared to what it looked like off the foot. So first and 10 for Effingham at their 41-yard line. So they got the score, Dustin. They turn right around and get the stop. That's exactly what you hope your defense will do. For yeah, you. they, they got that big play they needed on third down, and uh, now you try and capitalize on it. Thompson up under center, first and 10. Barking out the signals, gives it to the deep back. And the Woomer chase was near the 45, and then they rip him down. So let's see about the spot. He got three to the 44, so it's second and seven. Second and seven for the Hearts at their own 44-yard line. Yeah, it's just not looking like it's shaping up to be a big night for Chase, but what you have to do is get just enough done in the running game to keep that defense honest so that when you do decide to put the ball in the air, as Effingham decided on the, on the last possession, you have those openings uh, to, to get a little something done. Second and seven, Hearts with the ball at their 44. Thompson up under center, looking to throw. Across the middle, it's through the hands of Holden Lewis, and it falls incomplete. It was over Holden's head. 
Then there was Tristan Duncan deeper and three Mattoon defenders deeper. Yeah, the problem, I think, on that play was all the green jerseys in the neighborhood. If that pass isn't too high for Holden Lewis, then mm -hmm. you've got a couple of Mattoon players that have just as much of a chance to get a hand on it as he does. So maybe a blessing in disguise that it wasn't a particularly accurate throw, but now it does leave you in a third and seven situation. Hearts at their 44-yard line. And Thompson staying in the shotgun, so you would suppose a pass play here on third and seven. There's the snap, looking to throw across the middle. It's caught by Duncan, and he's got nowhere to go. And down he goes. Might have got a little yardage, but boy, Matt Toon had that defended well. Yeah, Nate Thompson, his first look was actually to chase Wimmer, who was lined up beside him in, in that shotgun snap. And then he quickly looked to the left instead, the short pass to Duncan, and Duncan absolutely nowhere to go. I think fortunate that they gave him back to the line of scrimmage on yep. that play. They did indeed call it no gain, so it's fourth and seven, and the Hearts will kick it away. Good snap, taking his time. There's the kick away by Pontius, and it is inside the 20 where Mattoon catches it, and down he goes. Great coverage by the Hearts, and nice work out there by the Hearts number 10, Gunner Franklin, on special teams. Heck of a stop uh, as the return man. Barely had the ball tucked in, and down he went. Yeah, Keegan Kurtz caught that punt. His momentum carrying him backwards a little bit. And just nowhere for him to go. They'll mark it just shy of the 20. Which is basically where he caught it. Mm -hmm. You are correct. 7.56 left in the second quarter as Mattoon starts this series. It's 7-0 Effingham. Been tough sledding, but boy, you can always bank on the Hearts defense. So it's first and 10 at Mattoon's 19-yard line. That's where they'll start this series. Up under center is Spurgeon, and now there's a flag. Someone, I think, jumped for Mattoon. Yeah, they're the team walking back. So on first down, uh, procedure penalty against Mattoon. So that'll send them back just inside the 15-yard line. And now it's first and 15. Matt Toon's fourth penalty of the evening. Effingham's only been penalized one time, so played a little cleaner game than the, than the Green Wave have. And yeah, you're already backed up if you're Matt Toon. The last thing you want to do is get that much closer to your own end zone. Hart's looking to go 3-0 and on the season with a win here tonight. There's the snap. They're looking to throw. It's deep, and it's over everybody. Coach Hefner had the best shot at that one. It falls incomplete, stops the clock with 7.51 to go on the second, brings up a second and 15. Yeah, I'm not uh, exactly sure what the miscommunication was there. Or honestly, I just don't think Spurgeon waited long enough to get rid of that one. Didn't give the defender enough time to get the ball down the field. But then again, might have been feeling some pressure in the backfield. It didn't seem like a sack was imminent. But also the last play that Spurgeon had on the field, he got hit in the backfield. So maybe he just got a little bit of happy feet back there. Second and 15, they hand it off. They're going to the far side. Johnson with the carry, and he's got a big head of steam. He has the first down. There is a flag on the play, so we'll see what that's about. But Johnson does get a first down, does well, get first down yardage. That flag is right over there where he turned the corner, and so one might presume that it was, again, a, a block against Mattoon. Yeah, it's a holding call. So, again, they, they gave him a, apparently an illegal block that allows him to to turn the corner there, and then they're going to be moving even further back. Flag is thrown at the 23, so they'll run it back to the 13-yard line. So the play should have gained five, right? Uh, nine, because right. the line of scrimmage has moved back to the 14. Thank you. So then the 10-yard walk-off for the hold. So Mattoon now on their 16-yard line, and it's second and 15. Mm -hmm. Seven nothing Hearts. Effingham back home for a two-game homestand starting next Friday night, playing host of the Taylorville Tornadoes. Hearts and the Tornadoes have played for about 100 years in high school football. That's not far wrong. Pass is incomplete. They came to the near side, sort of an angle. Not quite sure who that was intended for. Maybe Keegan Kurtz. He was in the neighborhood anyway. Incompletion brings up a third and 15 now. And Dylan Burton was also over there in the neighborhood, but 
not catchable by anybody. So now Matt Toon, another third and 15. Didn't work out too well for them on their last possession, and they're even closer to their own goal line than they were the last time. So Effingham's defense could uh, could really make some hay here because if you could if you could limit this and put them in another punt situation, well, the punts haven't been great so far. You could give yourself a really nice short field with a, with a good defensive play here. How about an interception? That'd be okay, too. From the shotgun, looking to throw, goes to the sideline. That's incomplete, and no flag. The receiver fell down, yeah. and he was looking, but the official waved it off and said, nah, nobody was going to catch that one. Well, and I don't know that the defender even made contact with him, quite honestly. I think his feet just came out from underneath him, so I think it was a pretty easy pretty easy no call on the part of uh, the, the officiating crew here. Maybe frustration on the receiver's part as much as anything. And so now, yeah, you're going to have a situation where Dylan Burton's got to stand back just uh, just a step in front of his own goal line to punt this. Fourth and 15 at the 16. Here's the kick, and it's straight up the shoot, and the Hearts are again going to get wonderful field position. Yeah. Although Mattoon does again get a favorable bounce, it hit it about Mattoon's 40 and then rolled into Effingham territory. But Effingham's going to have it first and 10 at their own 48-yard line. This is great field position. Yeah, somehow Dylan Burton's getting that punt to where <laughs> even though it's going like straight up in the air, when it hits, it takes a, a very, very strong bounce toward the other goal line. And most of the distance on these punts is after, they've, after they bounce. So 34, 36-yard punt. Effingham first and 10 at their own 48. Effingham leads 7-0. 7 7.28 left in the second quarter. Lewis split to the far side. Handoff to Woomer. Chase gets it into Mattoon territory, and then he gets stood up. But a decent gain on first down. From Effingham's 48 to Mattoon's 48, a gain of four, and that'll make it second and six. Fraction second down six. Beautiful night. A little nippy, but... Uh, Great night for football. I know it's March. No, it's April now, isn't it? I can't even keep track of what month it is. Some nights I wonder about what sport it is. Second and six. Thompson up under center. Handoff. Woomer again. Gets it inside the 45 before he goes down. It'll be third and short. Chase gains to Mattoon's 44-yard line, so another gain of four. And it's second, it's third and two. And four yards is pretty much uh, the best result you can expect so far running against this Mattoon defense. It's, uh, Chase has done that three or four times, but that's about as long as it gets. He did have one seven-yarder. Hard shift to the near side here, and they run that side. And Woomer still on his feet. Oh, got the first down. Great spin move inside the 40 for a first down. Yeah, I mean, that's great awareness from Chase Woomer to know what was going on in front of him. I mean, he ran into a log jam and was able to spin free. As Effingham really just clogged that up, they, they ran a – they just bunched everything up right in the middle of the field. Didn't look like he had anywhere to go, but he spun away from it and was able to get the chains moved. And unfortunately, got a Matt Toon player who seems to have gotten shaken up uh, in the middle of that play. The gain, Dustin, is to the 37. So that's a gain of seven. Plenty enough for a first down for the Hearts. And now we'll tend to the injured Green Wave player. The clock stops with 6.14 to go in the second quarter. Effingham leads at 7-0 here at Mattoon. Headed home to Taylor or for Taylorville next Friday night. Hearts had homecoming last week. And uh, the week after that will be senior night. I know, it's kind of weird, but that's what you do in a six-game season. So the last home game, well, in fact, I need to double-check with Mr. Waltman. I'll double-check about senior night. He might have told me it's going to be the Taylorville game, just to be on the safe side. I'll double-check with him. I'm sure he's probably listening, so we'll double-check on that. Still tending to the Mattoon injured player right at the 40-yard line of Effingham. Yeah, sitting up anyway, which is... I suppose an encouraging sign. I'm, I'm looking, and I'm guessing. Well, I'm not going to guess on the number fifty something, but uh, it is a little tough angle to see exactly what the number is. Fifty six. Now they're going to get him up. That's encouraging. They've also got those shiny gold numbers, so mm -hmm. get a little reflection. Yeah, fifty six. So that is uh, Zach Watkins, a senior. Senior lineman, and uh, he's walking off the field. Looks like maybe his uh, right arm. They seem to seem to be making sure 
they're taking care of that as they as they walk off. So hopefully just a stinger and he'll be okay. So the gains to the 37, and it was plenty enough, as I said, for a first down. So first and 10 for the Hearts at Matt Toon's 37-yard line. Hearts lead at 7-0, 614 to go, second quarter. Hearts looking to go to 3-0 on the season. Thompson back to the shotgun here. Got guys split both ways. And a back beside him. That's Woomer. Here's the throw, and it's oh almost intercepted. It falls incomplete. Holden Lewis was the intended receiver for the Hearts. And Mattoon, Schick just about picked that one, but it falls incomplete, and it's second and ten. Yeah, well, that was uh, that was about as gift-wrapped as it gets for Schick. He's got to be frustrated that he wasn't able to hold on to it. That play, again, a shotgun snap. He faked a handoff to Chase Woomer standing to his right and then made that pass over uh, kind of on the right side of the field. But uh, Schick sniffed it out, got a hand on it. Effingham, fortunate, still out possession. So Lewis split to the far side. They've got both both Wolf and Duncan down here to the near side. Now they ran Wolf over to the right side, left side of the line, and the pass is complete to Wolf, and Parker still on his feet, still on his feet, inside the 10 near the five yard line before they take him down. Well, we found a little something here. As Parker Wolf caught that pass, I mean, it was just a little dump off. There was nothing special there. That was basically, we'll give you the ball and you do it with your feet, and he sure did it with his feet. Uh, <laughs> Kind of, kind of circled back to the middle of the field, made a couple guys miss. Next thing you know, it's a first and goal situation. 30-yard pass completion and the run after the catch, the big thing. Of course, 30-yard gain. It's first and goal for Effingham at Mattoon's seven-yard line. 94 yards on four catches with a touchdown for Parker Wolf. So I'm out playing disc golf yesterday. That must be why he's playing so well tonight. Thompson up under center, first and goal, handoff to Woomer, Chase looking for a hole, he's driving and diving, and he is in for the touchdown. Touchdown Effingham, Chase Woomer takes it in from seven yards out, the Hearts extend their lead to 13 to nothing, the score comes with 533 remaining in the second quarter. Hefner in for the extra point try from Parker Wolf's hold. And Herbeth, the snapper. Good snap. Placement. Kicks up. Looks good to me. The officials agree. It's 14-0 Effingham with 5.33 to go. Second quarter back with a kickoff in a minute on 97.9 XFM. ProLube of Effingham is more than just your favorite oil change shop. We sell and install all major brands of tires. Check engine light on. We also perform diagnostic and repair work. Call or stop by today for a free quote at ProLube of Effingham. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Enjoy the conveniences of banking with all the services offered at Washington Savings Bank. Member FDIC. Good drive by the Hearts. Six plays, 52 yards, took a minute, 55. Highlighted by the seven-yard touchdown run by Chase Woomer. Bo Hefner's kick was good, and the Hearts are up 14-0. But boy, that 30-yard pass play to uh, Parker Wolf really helps set that play up. Kickoff rolls through the up man's legs. The back man picks it up at about the 15, got it out across the 20, and that's where he is taken down by Dalton Fox on special teams for the Hearts. Went through one pair of legs, almost through another one. That was actually the third guy to have a chance at the ball to, to make the return. Kind of a little return man croquet game going on back there, <laughs> and that works Effingham's favor. It wasn't, it wasn't a fantastic Fantastic kick is a little bit up in the air, but uh, by the time they were able to start bringing it up the field, well, the Effingham kick coverage had made its way down the field and limited them to a six-yard return. So first and ten for Mattoon at their 21. So again, they, uh, as Dustin said, they don't have particularly good field position to start the drive. By the way, this drive will start with 5.29 to go before halftime. So now 14-0 Effingham. Hearts have a little breathing room. Let's see what the defense can do here. There's the snap, handoff, down goes Johnson. Holy cow. Herbeth. Man, what a tackle. Yep, Austin Herbeth got in there, stood him up, and dragged him down, and that is a loss, and that's not something that we have said about Ja'Kai Johnson very often tonight. Hearts tend to take a toll. They're going to mark it back at the 19, which I think is generous, but a loss of two nonetheless, and it's second and 12. So, that's got to be discouraging. Your first play, you get a two-yard loss. Well, and remember, Effingham will get the ball back to start the half. 
start the second half. So, yeah, you keep them off the scoreboard here, and you start looking at a situation where not only do you shut them out at halftime, but you get the ball first and you have a chance to run a lot of time off the clock uh, to open the second half. 14 nothing Effingham back to take the snap. Mattoon the handoff to the far side, and... Ball carrier gets it just across the 20. That's Johnson again. And boy, there is not much. Call it the 20. So a gain of one. My goodness. So it's third and 11. Yeah, definitely. Definitely encouraging to see how well Effingham is doing as they have uh, they have slowed Johnson down on his first two carries here. Uh, that's his 16th carry already, 71 yards for him, so it's a good night. But uh, but uh, you do wonder, you know, again, like you say, maybe wearing things down mm -hmm. a little bit there in the trenches. Four minutes left before halftime. Here's the handoff. They give it to the up back, I believe, that time, and they got near the 23-yard line. Or is it Johnson again? Yeah, it was Johnson again. Yeah. Is a little bit quicker play, a little bit quicker to develop, and he got uh, he got tripped up there, not too far across the line of scrimmage. wasn't able to get much there before he was going head first into the turf. Gain of three to the 23, so it's fourth down and about eight. So Mattoon's going to have to kick it away again, and they keep getting farther and farther near their end zone as they're punting this ball away. You know, as high as he kicks it, but then as much as good of a bounce as he usually gets, I wouldn't mind seeing the return man step up a little bit further uh, here. They've still got the return man back on the other side of the 50. Fourth and eight. And now they call time. So Mattoon calls time. And time comes with 3.11 to go in the second quarter. They're in punt position and want to talk it over before they kick. It's 14-0 Effingham here on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located South Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center is proud to announce their new outpatient therapy. Evergreen now offers physical, occupational, and speech therapies for their patients. If you need therapy, don't worry. Evergreen's outpatient therapy can help you too. Give Evergreen a call today for a tour. Mm -hmm. Well, see, there's a good kick. Wow. Dylan Burton with a nice punt for Mattoon. Drives the hearts back with inside their 40-yard line. And considering he was kicking from inside his 20, that's a heck of a boot. Yeah, that's his, that's the best uh, kick he's had all night. And so, you know, I'm sitting up here during the break saying, well, Effingham needs to move the return man up a little bit because this guy's popping everything up. Well, he, he got a little better one there. And so... It's still decent field position for Effingham at its own 36, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a pretty good kick. They've got a ways to go here, but still 301 to work with also. Mm -hmm. About a 44-yard bunt the way that shapes up. The Hearts have it first and 10 at their own 36. As Dustin said, 301 left in this second quarter. Effingham in front, 14 nothing here at Mattoon. Nate Thompson's liking running out of the shotgun. They've got Holden Lewis. They move him over to an end spot. He rolls to the far side, gets the pass away, and is it incomplete? It is incomplete. They tried to throw to Lewis, but they had Thompson on the run. Nate tried to plant and get the throw, but Lewis had to extend himself vertically to try, or as horizontally as it turned out, to try and make the catch, and it came up empty. So, second and ten. Yeah, Thompson on rolling out to his left and just not able to not able to get that one up where where Lewis would be able to get his uh, get his hands on it. And so. Still, you know, they've, they've had pretty good luck throwing the ball, and you've got Parker Wolf lined up in the slot here with a couple of guys wide. See what we get here. Second and ten, looking to throw, going deep across the middle, and it's picked. Interception by Mattoon. They go to the far side of the field. Rumor came up to make the stop. He was lined up beside Thompson as a running back, and he comes up and saves the interception, or saves the touchdown here. But Mattoon with the pick on a throw right across the middle. Mattoon returns the ball inside Effingham's 30. And let's see about the spot. It's at Effingham's 27-yard line. Holy cow. Yeah, that was number 50, Aiden Spurgeon, who picked that one off the middle of the field. And 
Really, he just read that play. They were trying to go to Parker Wolf. He was lined up in the slot, going over the middle of the field. Spurgeon saw it coming, was able to jump that route. He got the re interception and a 19-yard return. Now Matt Toon a chance to maybe get a little momentum on his side going into halftime. That's how Matt Toon won the game last week on an interception that they ran back for the winning touchdown. Yeah, 2.46 as Mattoon starts this drive. 2.46 left in the second quarter. Handoff to Johnson. He turns it up the middle, and he's inside the 25, about the 22-yard line. So a decent gain on first down here. So Mattoon with the interception. The gain is to the 23. So from the 27 to the 23, gain of four, and it's second and six. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Now the thing to remember too, Mattoon has burned two of their timeouts this half, so they're working on one timeout. 14-0 Effingham, Mattoon with the football, second and six inside the Hearts 25. There's the handoff. They straight oh. out and oh my goodness, he got <laughs> obliterated. What a hit by Stoneburner. Stoneburner and then, you know, not to not to leave Jacob Logan out because he got in Ooh. on that play too. Yeah, Ja'Kai Johnson. That looked like it was going to be a pretty decent gain as he turned the corner on the right side there, but he got, uh, yeah, he got, uh, he got uh, fed to the turf there at the end. My goodness, no gain. It's third and six, four, four, and three, three. What a hit! Johnson will remember that one, and he's going to come out. Yeah, he's coming over to the sidelines. That was good, clean hit. No, oh, yeah, there's hey, nothing wrong with it. They hit him a lick. So second, third, and six now. This big play. Look at the throw. Across to the sideline. Almost oh. stolen. Almost stolen. Yeah, Parker Wolf got a hand on oh, that one. Buddy. He read that play all the way. And that's interesting. Mattoon had three receivers lined up to the left and a he single played, receiver to the, the right. Never did say that. And uh, Effingham didn't overcommit to that left side. And Parker Wolf came in on the play and, and probably feels like he should have picked that one. Yeah, two hands, one on each side of the helmet. He... He was thinking, man, I should have had to grab, but he knocked it away, and that's the bottom line, and the pass came up incomplete. Now, all of a sudden, Matt Toon's fourth and six at Effingham's 23. And they do. Uh, they still don't have They still don't have Ja'Kai Johnson on the field, I don't believe. Yeah, he's still on the sideline here. Here's the snap. They're looking to throw the hearts at him on the run, and down he goes. <laughs> it's going to be Effingham football on the change of downs. And a couple of heroes out there, Zach Slifer with some help from Gabe Keeney. Well, listen, if you got your stud running back lined, uh, sitting on the sideline, Effingham knows you're going to put the ball in the air, and whenever they uh, are able to blitz like that, they're gonna, it's going to work out pretty well. Loss of nine, second sack of the night for the Hearts defense. And Effingham football. That was fourth down, and Matt Toon gets sacked. And so the Hearts get the ball right back after the turnover. First and 10 at their own 32-yard line. And now the plan is to run out the first half. Back to throw? No, the handoff instead. And let's see who was carrying that time. I'm not that's sure. that's Trevor Donsbach now. Yep. Old number 28's turn to carry the ball this time. And he's out across the 35 to the 36. So a gain of four. And it's second and six. And we're under a minute to go, so the Hearts are perfectly content to just run out the clock and head to the locker room with a two-touchdown lead. Here yeah, time. you know, you, you dodged a bullet, pick, turning it over deep in your own territory. No reason to no reason to get cute here. Thompson going to throw. Well, going deep. Please. Got him in. There's Duncan. Knocked loose by Mattoon. Incomplete. Boy, what a great defensive play for Mattoon yeah. by Dylan Burton. Otherwise... That was going to the locker room there with the ball. Yeah, Tristan Duncan got past the defense behind him, but not enough, and the throw was a little short. When you're a quarterback, you want to throw it so that your receiver can go and get it. Instead, Duncan was having to come back for it a little bit, and that gave Burton enough time to get a hand on it. And quite honestly, a couple of other green jerseys were in the neighborhood by the time that was all said and done. Now, and now I really do think there's nothing to do here but run the ball. Third and seven, and Mattoon signaling timeout. So they're going to burn their last time out here with 35 seconds left before halftime. So timeout on the field. Gail, let's take a 30-second break. 35 seconds left before halftime. It's Effingham 14, Matt nothing on 97.9 XFM. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Keller Drive in Effingham will find a car that works for you. Check out their selection of cars and trucks today. 
ProLube of Effingham is more than just your favorite oil change shop. We sell and install all major brands of tires. Check engine light on. We also perform diagnostic and repair work. Call or stop by today for a free quote at ProLube of Effingham. 35 seconds left before halftime. It's Effingham 14, Mattoo nothing. So third down and seven. Let's see what the hearts do here. I've stopped guessing. We got Lewis split out here wide to the near side. There's a handoff, and it's Donsbach again, and Trevor's out across the 45-yard line before they finally slow him down. Nice run. Donsbach with a gain to the 46-yard line, and that's enough for a Hart's first down. Down to 25 seconds left in the first half. Donsbach comes in and gets the biggest gain of the night for an Effingham running back and with the clock starting up again and the play clock showing more time than the game clock. I do believe that we have seen our last play of the first half. A good first half of football by Effingham. And the horn will sound here in just a second. And a half. And there it is. And at the half here at Mattoon, it's Effingham 14, Mattoon nothing. Hart's looking to go 3-0 and on the season. Halftime show on the way in uh, just a minute, Gail, here on 97.9 XFM. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Enjoy the conveniences of banking with all the services offered at Washington Savings Bank. Member FDIC. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located south Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. This is the Compass Advisory Group Halftime Show. For all of your insurance needs, contact Corey McDaniel at 347-9697. All right, we're back at Mattoon High School at halftime. It's Effingham 14, Mattoon nothing. And the Hearts looking to go 3-0 on the season as they put up two second quarter scores for that contest. And thank you, Mr. Waldman. Appreciate that clarification. So let's recap the scoring first of all here. Effingham got on the board with 11-17 to go in the second quarter. They completed a nine-play, 80-yard drive. It took three minutes to complete, highlighted with a 20-yard pass play from Nathan Thompson to Parker Wolf. Now, you'll remember in basketball season when Parker gave Nate the ball for that two-hand dunk. <laughs> Now this time it was Nate giving Parker a 20-yard pass for a touchdown. Bo Hefner's kick was good, and the Hearts had a 7-0 leading, and it came with 11-17 to go in the second quarter. Hearts came right back, scored with 5.33 to go in the second quarter at the end of a six-play 52-yard drive. Took a minute 55 off the clock, highlighted by Chase Woomer's seven-yard touchdown run. Hefner's kick was good, and the Hearts had a 14-0 lead. So two second-quarter scores have the Hearts in front. Now, Mattoon got an interception of an eight Thompson pass and got it in great field position, and you were kind of concerned that the Hearts' lead was at least going to be shaved a little. But the Hearts came back with some great defense, and Mattoon went for it on fourth down in great field position, as they should have. And the Hearts just sacked the quarterback after a withering hit in the play before, and the defense really came to the fore. Hearts got the ball back and were able to run out the first half. So at the half, it's Effingham 14, Mattoon nothing. That's a quick check on the scoring. Gail has several scores for us, and... We will remind you we'll be back home next week and for the next two weeks. Effingham will be hosting Taylorville next Friday night. It'll be a 7 o'clock kickoff, and we'll have it for you on 97.9 XFM. I mentioned Mr. Waltman a moment ago. He clarified for me that Mount Zion game will be senior night for the Hearts. So the Hearts and the Rays the week after Taylorville. And that'll be senior night, and then we head to Lincoln to wrap up this quick six-game season. But so far, so good for the Hearts. Again, at the break, 
Effingham 14, Mattoon nothing. Dustin has lots of stats. We'll recap the scores from around the area as well. Back with that in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center is proud to announce their new outpatient therapy. Evergreen now offers physical, occupational, and speech therapies for their patients. If you need therapy, don't worry. Evergreen's outpatient therapy can help you too. Give Evergreen a call today for a tour. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Keller Drive in Effingham will find a car that works for you. Check out their selection of cars and trucks today. All right, back at Gaines Field here at Mattoon High School at halftime. It's Effingham 14, Mattoon nothing. Dustin has a lot of numbers to recap. Let me remind you again, no NASCAR this weekend on your home for NASCAR. NASCAR, by and large, a polite bunch. They know it's Easter weekend, so they take Easter weekend off. So no race action this weekend. But we'll be back with a doubleheader for you the next weekend, both Saturday and Sunday coverage on your home for NASCAR, KJ Country at 102.3. Once again, I will mention Hearts back home next Friday night, a two-game homestand. They'll play host to Taylorville next Friday night. Then it's Mount Zion to wrap up the home season, and that'll be senior night. And then we head to Lincoln to wrap up this six-game season. By the way, we now have our baseball and softball broadcast schedules ready. Dustin, I'll tell you that, that we just got that done today. So I'll be sure to make you aware of that soon. And uh, we'll have both baseball and softball for you. We'll do as many area games as we can. So keep that in mind. And that'll start the week of April 15th. So that in the loop as well. In fact, we'll be starting summer sports. I think it's officially summer sports in the IHSA schedule this year before we're done with football. So get ready for some of that on 97.9 XFM and KJ Country at 102.3. Dustin working on the stats, so I think he's ready. Sir? I am. I just got uh, just got the last thing written down here. So let's take a look. Uh, Effingham outgained Matt Toon 160 to 71 in that first half of play. The Hearts ran 27 plays for their 160 yards. Matt Toon 29 plays for just 71 yards. So uh, we talked in the open about Effingham's defense uh, having having really carried the water for the team the first couple of weeks, and uh, nothing's really changed. Uh, 71 yards on 29 plays. You don't have to have a calculator handy to know that that is pretty good. Hearts uh, had eight first downs in that first half, four on the ground, four through the air. They limited the green wave to just two first downs, and I believe they both came on Mattoon's first possession of the game. They ran a four-minute and 42-second possession to start the game and didn't get any points on the board, uh, got a couple of first downs, and since then they have not moved the chains. Uh, Effingham ran the ball 13 times for 58 yards in the first half, 4.4 yards per carry, one touchdown, limited Mattoon to 68 yards on 24 carries. So Mattoon had more rushing yardage, but they did it on 11 more carries, just 2.8 yards per carry for the Green Wave. And then passing the ball, Hearts uh, put the ball in the air 14 times, completed half of those, seven, had one intercepted, but had one go in for a touchdown, 102 yards. Mattoon, five pass plays, one complete three yards and that's it they have not been able to get anything done through the air and so that's how you get to 160 to 71 in terms of total offense so not not big numbers for Effingham but practically nothing for the green wave uh, as far as uh, as far as turnovers go Effingham does have the one turnover of the game they were intercepted uh, penalties though hearts just one penalty for five yards that was very early on Matt Toon four penalties for 30 yards time of possession does heavily favor Matt Toon uh, 14 minutes and seven seconds to 9.53 for Effingham. Let's uh, shift gears. Let's look at some individual stats, and we're going to start with Matt Toon. As far as running the ball, it's been basically Ja'Kai Johnson, 78 yards on 19 carries. Uh, Zachary Schick has taken th three carries for four yards, uh, but Jackson Spurgeon, the Matt Toon quarterback, has been sacked twice. There's 14 yards lost, which is where they get to their 68 total for the game. Speaking of Spurgeon, 
Uh, five pass attempts for him, as we said. Uh, one of them completed for three yards. That was a catch from Nate Eldridge, and that is it. That was Spurgeon's first pass attempt of the game, and he's been 0 for 4 since. They haven't put the ball in the air very much, and they have just had not uh, not a ton of success throwing the ball so far. Uh, one guy who has been busy for uh, Matt Toon is Dylan Burton. He's the punter. 152 punting yards on five kicks. So 30.4 yard average. And, and if you saw his kicks off the foot, you would say there's no way he's averaging 30 yards a kick. But he's got some good rules. His last kick was a really good one, too. I don't want to be picking on the kid. But uh, his last punt was a really good one, and he's got a 30.4 yard average. Did a pretty good job of reversing the field, quite honestly. Has had to kick from deep in his own territory several times. He also has a four yard punt return return to his credit tonight. Uh, Logan Blackburn has a 27-yard kick return. Ja'Kai Johnson, a 17-yard kick return. And Jackson Spurgeon, a 6-yard kick return. Uh, Aiden Spurgeon had that interception for Matt Toon and a 19-yard return. And like you mentioned, when you're going through the going through the first half action, you know, came close. I uh, Gave Effingham a little scared that maybe they were going to get on the board and, and cut that lead in half, but the Hearts defense was able to stand up to it. But that is the one takeaway of the game that belongs to Aiden Spurgeon on that pickoff. As far as Effingham's off uh, individual numbers go, uh, Chase Wilmer has scored their lone rushing touchdown tonight. He's got 44 yards on 11 carries, and the last of those 11 was a 7-yard touchdown run. Uh, it's, it's been tough sledding for him, quite honestly. Just 44 yards on his 11 carries. Trevor Donsbach, uh, a couple of runs there late in the half. He gained 14 yards on those two runs. But then uh, Nate Thompson has uh, gained 102 yards, 7 for 14 passing, one touchdown, one interception. The touchdown was a 20-yarder to Parker Wolf, one of four catches for Parker, 94 yards. Parker... He might have caught a pass last week, a pass or two, but but uh, certainly certainly this has been a revelation. Four catches, 94 yards, and those are uh, receptions of 24, 20, 20, and 30. So just <laughs> just really getting a lot done, and 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 a lot of yards after catch on a couple of those. There was one over the middle, a really a, a pretty throw from Thompson, but then there's also been just some just some. We'll give you the ball and we'll let you do some work for Parker. And, uh, you know, he's one of four Effingham receivers to, to, to catch passes. But, of course, 94 of the 102 yards belong to him. As uh, Austin Herbeth caught one pass for three yards. Edgar Castillo caught a pass for five yards. I do believe that's his first reception of the season. And Tristan Duncan caught a pass, but was only able to get back to the line of scrimmage. So not, uh, not something we're accustomed to seeing, somebody putting up 94 yards in the first half and it not being Tristan Duncan. But... He's going to be the focus of every defense they see. So for someone like Parker Wolf to step up and find some openings and do some work, you'll uh, you'll certainly take it. As far as uh, punting the ball goes, tr uh, Tanner Pontius getting his first action tonight, and he was punted twice for 77 yards. That's a 38 and a half yard average. And so you know, Trevin Benavides did a great job punting the first two weeks, and uh, Tanner Pontius. Steps right in and does a great job himself. So Effingham with a couple of good options there. And uh, that's what you like to see. It's been a real strength of this team for the last few years. And it, nothing has changed. And, of course, the only number, of course, that matters is 14 and, and 0. And the 14 belongs to Effingham. Effingham, they've shut out Matt Toon here in this first half, Greg. Wonderful job as always. Thank you, Dustin. I do want to mention that one thing we've learned about Brett Hefner in this five years is that each week... There's another wrinkle. There's another thing added to the playbook and the bag of tricks. And this week, it's been throw the ball to Parker Wolf. Well, and I think that you're especially going to see that in a season like this, where there was there was no there were no summer workouts. There was no real ramp up to this season. You just basically had to go out there and start playing. So, so yeah, I think that the, you're you're especially going to see where things you just weren't comfortable having in your playbook in week one. As you get a little bit more practice and a little bit more time together, you'll be able to, to be able to utilize those things. Changing up space. Special teams, kids. I mean, there's all kinds of things to think about. You never know when an injury is going to come along or a wrong test result or whatever. So, anyway, glad to have strength in numbers. Here are the other scores. As we said here at halftime, Effingham leads Mattoon 14 to nothing. Newton is in front of Flora in the second quarter. Newton 21, Flora 6. Paris is leading Alney Richland County 21 to 7 in the second quarter. At halftime, Cumberland in front of Villa Grove Heritage 7 to nothing. And those are the 
games that we have numbers on. Now, again, some games are not being played tonight, and so we may not have any scores on some of these. The other matchups tonight, or this weekend, I should say, Charleston and St. Joe Ogden, Muhammad Seymour and Lincoln, Mount Zion at Taylorville, Casey Westfield and Oblong, Vandalia and Pena, and Sullivan Okaw Valley and Shelbyville. So those are the other games we're keeping an eye on. And again, where there are some Saturday games, uh, I saw one schedule that even had a Thursday game for uh, one pair. So all I know is right here at halftime, it's Effingham 14, Mattoon nothing. And good crowd here from Effingham tonight. That's nice to see, and they'll be able to be home next week as the Hearts play host to the Tornadoes. We have seen some legendary games between Effingham and Taylorville through the years. But we have the game up at Taylorville a couple of years ago when they had that amazing run. Uh, beat them, what, 51 to 38 or something enormous like that. Yeah, put a lot of points on the board that night against a good Taylorville team. Uh, it seems like all bets are off when those two schools get together. And rivalry that has spanned a couple of different conferences in a lot of years. Um, and uh, I, I don't expect any, any less from this game next week. This has been an interesting one, Dustin, because I was kind of leery about this one here at Mattoon, and they won last week in dramatic fashion, and I'm thinking, eh, well, I feel a lot better now. Yeah, I mean, and, and Effingham could really really put uh, put uh, Mattoon behind the eight mm. ball if they can get a good long drive on this first uh, possession of the second half. I mean, particularly if they put the ball in the end zone. Then you're, you're, you're Mattoon, you've got less than two quarters to work with, and you haven't been able to score yet, and you got three touchdowns to make up. That would be a pretty good situation for the Hearts to find themselves in. But even even to just be able to to run a nice possession and, and you know get the get a couple first downs, run some time off the clock, you're still no matter what, Matt Toon's going to get the ball. They're going to have less than two quarters, hopefully significantly less than two quarters. And you know they're trying to they're trying to get a couple of they're trying to get quick scores when they managed a grand total of 71 yards in the first half. It's it's a good position for Effingham to be in, and uh, they can really they can really set the tone for the rest of the game with their first uh, first time with the ball here. I haven't mentioned it lately, but the Hearts just the way the schedule worked out, the Hearts are the only team in the Apollo Conference that are going to play all the other football teams in the Apollo Conference this season. And if they run the table, then they're the champs. Yeah, and, and so obviously every game is important. I don't think that that's any sort of a revelation. That's the way conference football schedules work, right? Like you can't right. take a week off. Uh, there's just not enough of the games to, to make up for any sort of a snafu that might happen along the way. So so these, these games carry a lot of importance, but especially when, you know, you've spent the first couple of weeks getting yourself in that driver's seat, you know, it remains to be seen what will happen between Mount Zion and Taylorville. That'll add a little clarity to what uh, exactly you have to do the rest of the way, but, but you know that Taylorville's already lost a game, and so if Taylorville could turn around and somehow get a w and get the win against Mount Zion, boy, you get a win here tonight. You you feel really good about where you're at, and and uh, that's just it. You still got to take care of your business here tonight. But so far, Effingham has, and and it can't be said enough. They just continue to, to shut people down. That has been the that has been their calling card so far. You know, at times the offenses look good. At times the offenses, you know, had a little bit of trouble, uh, but but. The consistent thing for Effingham has been that they have kept teams out of the end zone, kept teams from being able to chunk up yards. I was a little concerned about that early on tonight. I thought that maybe Ja'Kai Johnson was going to mm -hmm. be the first guy to really, you know, put a dent in their armor. But uh, they, they seem to have solved that a little bit as the game has gone on. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Matt Toon makes any sort of adjustments uh, at halftime as far as trying to make sure that their stud ball carrier has a little better chance. But again... You could, you could put them in a position where they're not going to be able to rely on the run because if you could get a score here, well, they're going to have to, at some point, start throwing the ball a little bit. We'll have to be sure to watch how he comes out here and to start That's, the second half yeah. because he got hit in the next week on a play there late in the second and was quarter. And was not on the field. Not I mean, in a key situation where they probably could have, could have used him running the ball, they had somebody else lined up back there. That's a good point I had forgotten about. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Going to be interesting. 14-0 F. 
Effingham, Matt Toon ready to kick off as we start the second half. And it's a low line drive. They keep it away from any return man. It's taken on the hop at about the 17. And Donsbach gets it out near the 35-yard line. So, so much for what I said about a short return. He got to Hart's in pretty good field position to start the second half. Yeah, first kickoff of the game, Matt Toon's been able to do. And uh, Evan Cheney, number 14, who did the kicking there, it was just a little squibber, but uh, Trevor Donsbach caught that one clean with a head of steam off the off the turf and was able to take it from about the 17 to the 34. A really nice little kick return. So first and 10 for Effingham at their own 34-yard line. Just underway in the second quarter. Effingham in front here, 14-0, looking to go 3-0 on this young season. Thompson up under center on first and 10, but he's throwing, and it's caught out here by Holden Lewis, and he gets tackled for no gain. Holden never had a chance to turn up field, and a good play by Mattoon as Zachary Schick, who's done a nice job on defense for the Wave, makes the stop after the catch. So no gain, and it's second and 10. Yeah, Lewis made a nice grab out here in the flats, but Schick was waiting. So it's second and 10. Again, the Hearts with the ball at their own 34-yard line to start the second half. Thompson again up under center. Drops back, handoff, Donsbach back there again. And he cuts inside and got it across the 35. Let's see where they spot it, probably the 36. Six, I guess they're going to give him just two. So it's third and eight. Yes, uh, Coach Hefner must have seen something he liked out of Don's block on that last possession of the first half because he's the guy out there for the first possession and uh, gets the carry. Not a lot of room to run there. And now third and eight, you would really love to figure out a way to convert here and keep yourself on the field a little bit longer and do what we talked about at halftime. You know, keep, keep milking some time off this clock. Whole hearts are loading up with receivers. They've got Lewis and Duncan down here to the near side, and they've got uh, Duncan, I'm sorry, split out to, to the far side. They throw it across the middle instead to Donsbach, and he got nothing, and it's going to be punt time for the hearts. Yeah, just a little dump off, maybe a check down, I'm not sure. It seemed like that... Uh, I don't know if, if Thompson looked downfield much at all. He got rid of it pretty quickly. Donsbach had to kind of bat that one down before he could turn up field and run, so any chance that he might have had to break a play after catching it evaporated with that, and, yeah, it just gets back to the line of scrimmage. So no gain, so it's fourth and eight, and the Hearts are going to have to punt it away here with ten minutes left in this third quarter. They've got to get another man out there, and that's been in the – out there is Max Nelson. Here's the snap. Here's the punt. It's a good one. And it hits and now gets a huge Effingham bounce, and it's inside Mattoon's 30-yard <laughs> line. I like that. Stoneburner's waving it farther down the Yeah, feet. trying to trying to create a little extra wind. <laughs> good work, Stoney. I mean, listen, uh, he's... <laughs> He's an athletic kid. I don't know that he can swing his arms fast enough to, to get that ball to uh, to roll against the wind, by the way. He's trying to get it to, to roll the opposite direction of the wind. CJ, I hope you got the video on that. That was <laughs> that was classic. Stoney uh, managed to blow it and wave it to the 28, so Mantoon will set it up first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. That was, that was priceless. 14-0 Effingham, 9.43 to go third quarter as they start this drive. Matt Toon, the handoff, and he fumbled it, and the Hearts may get the football back. They gave it to Johnson, and he lost it, and Benavides was in there. They're going to say that Matt Toon retained possession, but boy, that had to be a scary moment for the Green Wave. And it is back to the 26, so a loss at two, and it's second and 12 first time either team has put the ball on the ground and Matt Toon just hasn't been able to they've had a lot of drives get started with uh, negative plays lately there's the snap handoff this time to Johnson he goes up the middle and the hearts stop it but not before he gets it out across the 30 it'll bring up third down and still some yardage to go and Slifer in there on the stop for the hearts along with Stoneburner Call it the 32, so a gain of six as it turns out. And that'll bring up a third and six. Just underway in the third quarter. Effingham here at Mattoon. Effingham in front, 14-0. Third and six now for the Wave at their 32. Still up under center. 
the quarterback, the handoff to Johnson. He's to the 35. He's shy of the first down. It's going to be fourth down. Schick carried that time, the up back. Yep. And it is a gain to the 36. So more than I thought. He got four, but he's still a couple of yards shy of a first down. So fourth and two for Matt Toon at their 36. They're down two touchdowns. Looks like they're going to go for it. Yeah, I kind of agree with their situation, with their decision to go for it in this situation here. So fourth and two at their 36. There's the snap. There's the handoff, and Johnson gets stuffed. Like I said, terrible decision <laughs> for Matt Toon to go for it there. Let's see about the spot. Let's see about the initial Isle. surge. Boy, that was... Wow, to the 39? That that's, is... That's, that is uh, that's a nice spot. Like I said, great decision to go for it. Uh. <laughs> so a gain of three. Listen, that's a... I don't know, that's a bad spot. <laughs> I'm not uh, going to complain too much, but that's not a great spot. I, that's a very favorable spot, but uh, that, that works out for Matt Toon. They get the chains moved. Here's what I'll say. My goodness. So it's first and 10 for Matt Toon at the 39, a gain of three, and it is a new set of downs for the Green Wave. Whoa. All right, they're going to throw. No, they're going to hand off. They went the other way, a little misdirection. They misdirected me, and down goes Johnson eventually, but he I, surged to the I, 45 for this. I think that was, that was Schick, and he misdirected, yeah, Schick. misdirected uh, a few defenders as he turned them back the other way, ran a few guys over, and just kept the pile moving. That's his best carry of the night. So to the 40, and those of the football just shy of the 45-yard line, so a gain of about six, and that's second and five, second and four, second and four and a half. It's five and a half, something like that, <laughs> four and a half, I don't know. Looking to throw, go out in the flats, the pass is caught, and it is enough for a first down just into Effingham territory. The catch out there by Dylan Burton. Mattoon picks up the first down. They spot it right on the 50-yard line. So a gain of five, and that's enough for a first down. Well, and again, they had so much trouble, or, you know, doing anything in the passing game in the first half. Well, they didn't try a whole lot, to be honest with you, but, but uh, they get that first completion here. See if it opens the door for them at all. 6.40 to go, third quarter. Hearts in front, 14-0. Mattoon on the march. They hand it off, and down goes the running back, Shicker Johnson, and I'll have to honestly wait until he stands up. They peel him off the turf. It's Johnson. All right. And they give him no gain, which is kind. I think that Ja'Kai Johnson's probably going to get to a point pretty soon where he might be about ready for this game to be over with. He's got 85 yards on 23 carries, but... The, the hits seem to be getting a little more punishing as the game goes on for him. And I wondered just roughly how much of that did he have probably in the first quarter? Uh, in the first quarter, I couldn't I couldn't tell you for sure, but right, right in the 60-yard neighborhood, yeah. Yeah, so vast majority of it he got early. Here's a drive up the middle, and the ball came loose, and the hearts say they've recovered. Let's see if they're right. The officials are right there. And yep. the Hearts have the football. Number 30, that is uh, Sean Cochran who came out of the pile with that football. Another DG guy. I saw him out there at lunch today. So nice recovery by Sean Cochran. Giving two on the carry, Dustin, to Effingham's 48. And then the fumble. And Cochran recovers for the Hearts. So first and 10 Effingham at Effingham's 48-yard line. So a uh, turnover. Gives the football back to the Hearts right about the time Matt Toon was having their best drive in a long time in the game. Here's the handoff. Donsbach, big head of steam coming to the near side. He's to the 40 before they drive him out of bounds. And that should be enough for a first down. So Trevor Donsbach seems to have maybe, uh, maybe assumed the role of feature back here in the second half and gets a real nice gain there, 12 yarder right off the bat. Well, Coach talked about it last week on the post game show. He talked about the fact that everybody knows what Chase can do. He's been running for 100 yards a game. But if you have two weapons, that's better than one. Here's the handoff again. Donsbach going to the near side this time, looking for room and gets it out to the Mattoon 35 yard line. Gain of five and it's second and five. So he got seven on the first carry there and he gets five more here and it's second and five at Mattoon's 35 yard line. 
5-10 to go, third quarter. Hearts in front here at Mattoon, 14 to nothing. Thompson up under center. They shift the backs. They send one to the tight end spot on the near side when they do that and then run somebody back to the fullback yeah. spot. Donsbach carries, and he gets it inside the 35 to the well, 34, as it turns out. I guess just one yard gain, so it's third and four. A lot of punishment to take for one yard <laughs> there. As he got kind of brought down to his knees, but not all the way down, and somebody else came in and put the rest of the hit on him. and. He was a little stood up there, a little defenseless, but able to walk away from it. Duncan out here, single coverage on third and four. Here's the handoff, and they've got they've got Stoney in at the blocking back, and he was blocking for Donsbach, and he got the first down. Now, you're running behind Jacob Stoneburner. You you got some room to roll, buddy. And, and a gain to the 26-yard line. And the Hearts have a new set of downs. Yeah, Trevor up to 42 yards on seven carries with that eight-yard pick up there. So he's he's uh, going to be the rushing leader with another run, you would think. So the Hearts have Stoneburner at that blocking back spot. There's the handoff to Donsbach. He turned it up the middle instead of following his blocking, and yeah. he does get it inside the 25 to the 24. Yeah, he. you're right. Uh, Stoneburner kind of went out wide to the left there, and Donsbach turned it up into the middle of the field, and just no place really for him to go. A couple of yards does get him up to 44, but, uh, but yeah, not, uh, not, a, not a huge amount of space there. To the 24, Hearts on the march, 3.38 to go in the third quarter, and, and if you're the Hearts, you love these long drives too because that's time that Mattoon doesn't have the football. Yeah, that's fine. We're under three and a half minutes in the second quarter. Thompson, oh, third quarter, I'm yep. sorry. Thompson up under center. Handoff this time. Donsbach this time following Stoneburner, and he gets it inside the 20. Nice gain. Not enough for a first down, but a good gain nonetheless. Let's see about the spot here. They'll call it the 18. So from the 24 to the 18, a gain of six. And that'll bring up third and about two. Third and two for the Hearts at Mattoon's 18-yard line. Thompson again up under center. Handoff. Donsbach. Oh, he got tripped up by a Mattoon player. He dove forward. Let's see about the spot here. It's going to really be close. They were going to move the chains. Now they do say. Yeah, the chain gang started to go, and then they're like, well, let's wait. Let's wait. But, uh, but yeah, I do think that the, there was enough gain there at the end of the day. Gain of three, gain of three to the 15. And the new set of downs for the Hearts. So now it's first and 10 at Mattoon's 15-yard line. The Hearts are knocking on the door now. And they shift the blocking scheme. They get the double stack on the right side of the line. There's a handoff. Donsbach, boy, what a great hole. He's still oh. on his feet. He's inside the 10 near the 5. Oh, he got a little space initially, but then got into that second level and was able to run a couple guys over. That was that was a good, hard, powerful run for Donsbach. Another first down as they get into first and goal territory. That was, uh, that was, that was stout. All at the 4. Gain of 11. First and goal for the Hearts at Mattoon's four-yard line. And they're chewing up most of the third quarter clock in doing this. Thompson up under center. Here's the snap. Hand off Donsbach. Gets it near the two before he falls down. First and goal at the four, and he gets a gain to about the, well, let's see about the spot, the three. They give him one. He got tripped up at the line of scrimmage, and his momentum carried him all the way to the goal line, but apparently a knee hit the ground quite a bit earlier than where he finally landed. This is working out well. Hearts have moved Stoneburner to the blocking back spot, the fullback spot, and he's blocking. Thompson under center. Handoff. Donsbach. Ooh, nice job by Matt Toon. Came up from behind Stoneburner and got Donsbach. And he's back near the five. So now it'll be third and goal. Football still inside the five-yard line, about the four and a half. So third and goal at the four. Minute 15 to go, third quarter. Hearts and front here at Mattoon, 14 to nothing. Looking to go to 3-0 and on the season. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be surprised if you put the ball in the air over in the corner and let uh, Tristan Duncan do a little bit of work here. He's over there one-on-one. -on -one. Hearts shift two men to the right again. Herbis, one of them. He can help block. And they're going to throw the rollout. It's caught and dropped. 
Boy, they had Donsbach over there, and he couldn't make the catch, and now it's fourth down. Well, it was actually Herbeth that was the intended receiver. I apologize. And, it is 89. Yeah, and, and I think Austin was probably starting to turn up field before he actually got the ball secured. Uh, he was he was certainly open. His two defenders were concentrated on Tristan Duncan, and nobody had converged on him. I think if, if Austin's able to haul that in, he can probably put his shoulder down and barrel across the goal line. I thought the Hearts might kick here, try a field goal, but they're not. They're going to go for the whole enchilada here. Again, the ball inside the five. It's fourth and goal now. Big one here. Thompson drops back to the shotgun. Donsbach beside him, looking to throw. There's a flag. Pass is caught for a touchdown, but the flag's thrown well ahead of the completion of the play. Parker Wolf made the catch down here in the corner of the end zone, but it's going to come back. Bad time for Effingham's first penalty of the half, only their second of the game. So now... Walking it back to the nine, you, you do wonder if that affects your decision-making at all. Yeah, they've had Hefner over, and he and Angel can both kick a field goal. I'll bet he'd like to try. I'll bet he might be doing a little lobbying on the sidelines, saying, hey, come on, you know. Got Lewis split out here to the near side. Duncan split out wide to the far side, and then they've got Parker Wolf in a slot. They're running him over to the far side of the field now. And then you got Donsbach lined up by Thompson in the shotgun. There's the snap, another procedure penalty. I think they had too many moving parts there. So that's going to bring it back another five yards on another procedure penalty. Yes, and now. <laughs> So now probably nobody's talking about field goals anymore because no. now all of a sudden we're talking about almost a 30-yarder. So now I think everybody's expecting a pass play because it is still fourth down in the hearts one time. 52 seconds left third quarter. Back in a minute, it's Effingham 14, Matt 2 nothing on 97.9 XFM. ProLube of Effingham is more than just your favorite oil change shop. We sell and install all major brands of tires. Check engine light on. We also perform diagnostic and repair work. Call or stop by today for a free quote at ProLube of Effingham. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Enjoy the conveniences of banking with all the services offered at Washington Savings Bank. Member FDIC. 52 seconds left in the third quarter. It's Effingham 14, Mattoon nothing. So now, Professor, what are you pulling out of your back of track? Hey, I don't know. You know, it's an interesting question because you, you had to keep coming up with the play you wanted to run. And you keep getting these five-yard penalties uh, going from the four all the way back to the, the 14. So Coach Hefner gets the timeout. I think at the end of the day, you're giving Matt Toon a really long field no matter what happens here. I would probably just go with a short little pass play to, to possibly – you got Duncan and Wolf right over there. Whoever's open over on that left side of the field, let them try and get it in after the catch, but no matter what, get Matt Toon close to their own goal line. Now they run Lewis across the middle, but that was a fake. They're throwing across the middle, and it's almost intercepted. It falls incomplete. There is a flag, though, as I think Thompson might have got hit late. Yeah, maybe he – so maybe after the two Effingham penalties that backed them way away from the goal line, Matt Toon may have just bailed them out there. We'll wait and see. But this could be uh, this could be a huge call. I see Nate Thompson on the ground. I see the official. Where they call? Oh, they called it on the Hearts. No. Roughing the passer is the call. Okay, yeah. they did point Matt Toon's way. Roughing the passer is the call, and that's an automatic first down. So now it was fourth down, and the Hearts had the perils of Pauline on this drive, and now Matt Toon bails them out with a roughing the passer call, and that is a new set of downs, and it moves it to the 7, Dustin. Yeah, so the Hearts have it first and goal at the 7. Happened back at the 17-yard line, apparently. So, so that, I mean, what a what a huge break for Effingham. For goodness sakes. And and quite possibly a game-breaker for the, for the Green Wave. So got Castillo back at the blocking back behind, in front of Donsbach, and boy, they stuffed it. That's first down, though, again, remember. Donsbach did get it. Mm, not back to the line of scrimmage. Call it the nine, a loss at two. So it's second and goal at the nine now. So a loss of two for Donsbach there. And uh, Hearts are still trying to get this one punched in. This will be the last play 
of the third quarter. They don't necessarily have to run this play, by the way. There's less time on the game clock than the play clock. Well, they're still moving people all over creation, and now timeout is called by the Hearts with eight seconds left in the third quarter. <laughs> Coach Hefner was halfway out on the field, so I, I'm glad they called time. Well, I think he's <laughs> he, he looks, body language would suggest he's a little angry that people hadn't realized, hey, we do not have to run this play. There's no reason to be scrambling and in a hurry here. It was... Uh, Organized confusion, but anyway, eight seconds left, so we'll keep it here because we're going to, by golly, have another play in this third quarter. Well, that was the thing. I mean, I think that Coach Hefner was just afraid that they were going to try to get, you know, that they felt like they needed to get a snap off and that if you, you know, you snap it before you're ready, you take the you take the chance of turning the ball over and uh, you don't want to see that. You don't want to burn your second time out of the half in the third quarter either. But you got this 14 nothing lead. You want to preserve it. You want to preserve this field position. You want to get the ball in the end zone. And so you got to take it there. It's not yep. uh, not ideal, but uh, but it is what it is. So this, this ought to be the last play of the half, no matter what. If we put the ball in the air and incomplete, I suppose you could see one more. But we're, we're dwindling down one way or the other. Okay, so we're pretty sure this is going to be the last play of the third I'd quarter. say there's about a 75% chance this is Archer. the last one. All right, Castillo blocking back. Don's back the tailback. Looking to throw. Got a man. It is caught, caught. for a touchdown. <laughs> Mattoon defender got a hand on that one, but uh, <laughs> Holden Lewis made the catch. <laughs> touchdown for Effingham to extend the lead to 20 to nothing, and the score comes with 3.9 seconds left in the third quarter, so no, it is not the last play of the third quarter, but it's a really good one. Uh, a break for Effingham, I'll tell you. A Mattoon player gets a hand on that pass. But Holden Lewis, good concentration to hang with it and catch that nine-yarder and give Effingham the three-touchdown lead. So 20 to, sit, 20 to nothing. Here's the kick. Hefner puts it up and in. 21 nothing hearts. 3.9 seconds left in a wacky series of events there that still hasn't closed out the third quarter because the kickoff's on the way. Back in 30 seconds, Gail, on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located south Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center is proud to announce their new outpatient therapy. Evergreen now offers physical, occupational, and speech therapies for their patients. If you need therapy, don't worry. Evergreen's outpatient therapy can help you, too. Give Evergreen a call today for a tour. All right, we're back. And, Dustin, how about that drive? How about 13 plays, 52 yards, 5 minutes and 42 seconds, and a 9-yard touchdown catch for Holden Lewis to, to cap that baby off. Glad to see the senior make the grab for the score. Hefner's kick was good. 21-0. Boy, now you really have some breathing room. And the Hearts ready for the kickoff. And the kickoff by Ozzie Angel, taken at about the 21 by Mattoon. They're coming to the near side, and down the man goes just across the 40. And the return man that time was Burton. a very busy Dylan Burton. Yeah, he really has had a busy night, hasn't he? <laughs> He's played about three different positions. He returns it to the 40, and that's where the third quarter finally comes to an end. After three, Effingham 21, Matt 2 nothing. Fourth quarter on the way in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Keller Drive in Effingham will find a car that works for you. Check out their selection of cars and trucks today. ProLube of Effingham is more than just your favorite oil change shop. We sell and install all major brands of tires. Check engine light on. We also perform diagnostic and repair work. Call or stop by today for a free quote at ProLube of Effingham. I know, I know. You're all at home saying, yeah, yeah, Greg, you were talking about how quick the third quarter was going, and then it took us 10 minutes to the last minute of the quarter. But we are in the fourth quarter. Well, Effingham's ahead 21 nothing. so what do you people want? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no worries here. All right, let's see what happens. Jackson Spurgeon up under center for Mattoon, and off to Johnson, and he got back to the line of scrimmage and falls forward for another yard or two. And he's saying, you know, this was sure easier earlier in the game. Wasn't it? Stoneburner took on about three Mattoon kids and tackles Johnson at the 41, a gain of one, and it's second and nine. 
Yeah, there's uh, just been a noticeable noticeable decline in the amount of space that uh, the Ja'Kai Johnson's had to work with at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Effingham has, has clamped down on him a little bit. I mean, knocked him out of the game for a little while, mm-hmm. anyway. I guess from Matt Toon's perspective, you're just glad to have him back on the field, but uh, he hasn't had much, uh, much opportunity to get anything done. Matt Toon runs Spurgeon back to the shotgun, and he passes, and the, caught, the, pa- the pass is caught. And a gain to about Effingham's 35-yard line by the time he's finally taken down by Jacob Logan. Nice grab there by Matthew Gordon for Matt Toon. Yeah, Matthew Gordon in one-on-one coverage with Gunnar Franklin. And Franklin, once uh, once he was not able to, to knock the pass down, then uh, then uh, you had Gordon get, get, uh, get past him and get a lot of yardage after the catch. 24-yard gain to Effingham's 35-yard line, and it's first and 10. Just under 11 minutes left in this one. Effingham in front, 21 nothing. But Mattoon now back up under center with Spurgeon. Here's a handoff to Johnson. He gets away from one defender, and then he's run out of bounds finally. Inside the 35, Benavides got over and ran him out of bounds. Johnson with the gain inside the 35 to the 33-yard line, so a gain of two, and it's second and eight. Clock stops with 10.45 remaining as the player ran out of bounds. Next week, the Hearts are home to the Taylorville Tornadoes. They start a two-game homestand. Yay! And we'll have it for you on 97.9 XFM, kickoff at 7 o'clock. Back to the shotgun now, Mattoon. Looking to throw Spurgeon, pumps and double pumps, and threw it out of bounds. So there you go with that. Well, they're going to have to start throwing the ball. Honestly, 10:41 to go in this game, down three touchdowns. You haven't been able to get anything done on the ground anyway. Uh, but you know that works to Effingham's benefit too, because they know it. And you know, Parker Wolf, the guy who has intercepted quite a few passes in his time at Effingham back there in the defensive backfield, and a lot of other talented guys. Uh, they're probably excited for this chance to, 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 to defend a few passes. Keegan Kurtz was the intended receiver, and the ball was thrown out of bounds. Clock stops with 10.41 left. It's third and eight. Low snap, but Spurgeon has it. Oh, the Hearts just missed a sack. Now down he goes. And nice work there by Cochran. And Sean Cochran came in, made the tackle. Well, Herbeth, the sack. Herbeth got in the backfield, mm-hmm. and uh, he got Spurgeon on the run. And then once that happened, then Cochran was able to come in and get the third sack of the game for Effingham's defense and push this one back to the 37-yard line. Loss of four on the play. And that brings up a fourth and 12, and obviously Mattoon's going for it. Well, and that's the other thing. I talk about the DBs being excited about pass plays, but also, you know, your pass rushers start licking their chops because they know they got to get something done. And now, uh, yeah, you see uh, you see Ja'Kai Johnson come off the field. Mm-hmm. He's not out there on this fourth and 12 play, so they'll load it up with receivers and see if they can get something accomplished here. And now Mattoon has to burn a timeout. Timeout wave, 9.51 left in this one. Back in a minute, it's Effingham 21, Mattoon nothing on 97.9 XFM. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Enjoy the conveniences of banking with all the services offered at Washington Savings Bank. Member FDIC. Come see all the redesigned Chevrolet and Toyota models at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, located South Route 45 here in Effingham or at danheck.com. Spurgeon passes, it comes up, picked off by the Arts. An interception over on the far sideline, right at the 15-yard line. Gunner Franklin. And number 10, Gunner Franklin with a nice pick. They threw it up for grabs, Dustin, and the Hearts came away with it. Al Spurgeon had to get rid of it. Again, obvious passing situation. Effingham's defense, their pass rush is going to tee off on that. Got him falling backwards. And uh, he just threw it up for grabs, like you said. But a really great catch by Gunnar Franklin, an mm-hmm. athletic play to go up and get that one. So the Hearts come away with it. It's first and 10 for the Hearts at their own 16-yard line. This drive will start with 9.44 remaining. Thompson up under center. Hand off to the deep back. And a good run still on his feet out across the 20-yard line. Nice run on first down. 
And this time it's Donsbach. So Trevor Donsbach, nice run on first down. The gain is to the 22, so a gain of six. That'll bring up a second and four, and we're down to 9.20 to play. I guess the only thing about Franklin intercepting that pass is it was on fourth down, so it actually moves Effingham farther away from the goal line, but I think he'd probably rather still rather have the interception. Up under center, Thompson. Handoff, Donsbach coming to the near side, can't get a block. Down he goes at the 25, and he lost the football. Mattoon recovers it at Effingham's 26-yard line. Schick comes away with it for Mattoon. Donsbach got hit, and as soon as the momentum sent him to the turf, the ball came loose. Schick quickly picked it up for Mattoon, and the Wave had the ball at the 25. So you give Donsbach three to the 25, and then the fumble. And Mattoon has it first and 10 at Effingham's 25-yard line. This drive will start with 9.02 remaining. Hearts by three scores, but that is unfortunate. So Spurgeon in the shotgun for Mattoon. Low snap, but he has it. Here come the Hearts. He throws it, and it's caught. That's a heck of a play because he was running for his life, and he completed the pass out there to Logan Blackburn, who's a sophomore. And a nice catch by the kid, but a heck of an effort by Spurgeon, the quarterback, to get that pass completed to the 22. So a gain of three out of all of that, but that was impressive. He kept his head well back there at the quarterback spot for Mattoon. But that's going to be the story. I mean, they have been, he's been running for his life every time so far. Second and seven. Coming to the near side, looking to throw, can't plant his feet. There's a flag. Down he goes, back out across the 30-yard line. Stoneburner takes him down for a loss. And no matter how this play turns out, Stoneburner at least got to throw him down to the ground. Uh, based on where the flag is at in the backfield, I'm going to guess that Mattoon was holding, and that is, the, that is the case. The flag is thrown at the 28. Line of scrimmage was the 22. you got to wonder... Whether the hearts might just decline. Nope, they're going to take it. Get them away from the goal line. I guess so. So a 10-yard walk-off takes the ball back out across the 35 to the 37-yard line. I guess there's still a loss on the play. Five yards. Plus, uh, plus you know, plus 10 yards back. So Ten four. Yeah. So it was at the 22. Now it's at the 37. So things looking better here for the hearts. Penalty stopped the clock with 8.48 remaining. It's second and 22 for Mattoon at the Hearts 37. Spurgeon in the gun again. There's the snap. Looking to throw. It's complete. Just inside the 35 by the time the receiver goes down. That's, Bla that's Matthew Gordon, and he's taken down by our old pal Austin Herbeth. Yeah, Stoneburner got a hand on him. Couldn't bring him down, but... Uh Herbeth makes the, makes the play. Only a two-yard pick up there. To the 35, so it's third and 20. Andy stayed in bounds, so the clock continues to run. We're down to 8-10 to go in this one. Hearts lead at 21-0 here at Mattoon. Looking to go to 3-0 on this young season. Home to Taylorville next Friday night. Spurgeon from the shotgun. Here come the Hearts. The pass is complete out in the flats and a nice run after the catch. He's inside the 25-yard line before he finally goes down. And they got a lot of the yardage back, but it's still going to be fourth down. Nate Eldridge, number 18, he caught the first pass of the game for Matt Toon, and he catches another one there as Effingham brought the house and uh, Spurgeon able to get rid of it and then plenty of room, obviously, with all the defense converged in the backfield. Giving 12, Dustin, to the 23, so it's fourth and eight. Matt Toon with the ball at Effingham's 23-yard line, but again, fourth and eight for the Green Wave. Still in the shotgun. There's the snap, looking to throw, caught out in the flats here again, and he's near the first down by the time he finally gets tackled. Not going to end up just short, and the Hearts are going to get the ball on downs. They tackle him at the 20, needed to get to the 15 for a first down. Yeah, same play, other side of the field, but Effingham was able to, to, to keep that one much more modestly uh, successful. And the catch by Nate Eldridge. They'll mark it right at the 20, so a gain of three. Not nearly enough for a first down, and the Hearts defense does it again. Once again, a turnover, but the Hearts 
bend but don't break, and they have the ball back. First and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Now with 7.09 left in the game, and the Hearts are up 21 to nothing. And the Hearts send Keegan Baker in at the back spot. And a good gain on first down. He's out across the 25 to the 27-yard line. The only thing about this, I like to see Donsbach and Baker get a chance to run the ball, of course, but you do wonder if there's a reason why Chase Rumor hasn't uh, seen any second-half action at all. I'm looking for him on the sidelines. Nothing at the moment. Here's the play. Hand off to the deep back. That's Baker again. And he drives and dives and gets near the 35-yard line. That's a first down for Effingham. Nice run by Keegan from the 34-yard lines where they spot it. Yeah, 27 to 34, so he got a seven-yard gain there. And a new set of downs for the Hearts, and now we're down to 6.28 to play. Thompson up under center on first and 10. Looking to hand off, and there was no one there. So Nate says, well, I'll just run, and he gets it out near the 45-yard line. I don't know if that was a busted player or if that was supposed to be some sort of <laughs> deception by design. It's hard to say. Well, it deceived me. It was funny looking, but it was <laughs> it was good for nine, almost 10 yards. I mean, nine and a half, to he be just, certain. Yeah, just about got the first down. It's just to the 44-yard line. He's about a half a yard shy of a first down. I'm honestly not sure he is shy. I don't know. It's, it's on the 44-yard line. I mean... <laughs> There's room for the down marker before he hit the first down marker. That's what we'll say. Hand off. There's a flag. And Keegan Baker got knocked in the next week here. So that didn't work out. It's going to be a hold, I'm sure. A loss and a penalty. There's the indication. Yeah, shift yeah, by the hearts gotcha. that didn't work out well. The ball is at the 43. Let's see where they mark this puppy. The flag's thrown back near the 35. Well, they'll just walk it from the line of scrimmage, and so that's a five-yard uh, five yard loss to the 39. Still second down, and now there's room to get a first down. So that matter is remedied. Under six minutes to play. Hearts and Frontier, 21-0. Effingham with a win at Muhammad. They beat Charleston at home last week and ahead of Mattoon by three scores here at Mattoon. Thompson, hand off to Baker. Good head of steam. Got the first down and then some. He's into Mattoon territory to the 40-yard line before they take him down. Nice run and good containment by the Hearts line. Keegan Baker makes the most of it, and it's a gain to Mattoon's 40, and that's a gain of 16 yards. So first and 10 hearts at Mattoon's 40. We're down to 536. Clock stops because he ran out of bounds, and we needed to move the chains. Now they restart the clock, so he didn't go out of bounds. First and 10 for the hearts at Mattoon's 40. There's the snap. Baker this time up the middle, bouncing off people. Looks like a pinball, and he got near the 35 before they take him down. 35, call it the 36-yard line. So a gain of four, and it's second and six. 39 yards on four carries for Keegan, so he's making his making his presence felt here in the fourth quarter as Effingham is trying to salt away another victory, and seems seems like we could start talking about this one in fairly safe terms. Now under five minutes to play in a three-touchdown lead for the Hearts. Thompson up under center. There's the handoff. Baker again. Look at the hole, Dustin. My gosh, he dies near the 30-yard line. What a hole. He ran left to center. And what a job by the offensive line for Effingham. My goodness. They'll score it at the 32. So a gain of four. And it's third and about two. Yep. Obviously, this deep into Mattoon territory, you're looking at four down territory. So even even if you don't get it here, which you probably ought to, you still get another chance. No passing plays here. Baker got off 
One man drives, dives forward. He's very close to the first down if he didn't get it. He's inside the 30. There's a flag over here on the near side of the field, though, away from the play. Something going on between Tristan Duncan and whatever uh, Matt Toon player was defending him. It's been a tough night for Tristan. Matt Toon has just covered him up. He's not had much of a chance as far as offense. The yeah. ball is inside the 30, so that's enough for a first down. Now let's see what the penalty's about. And it's on the hearts. Yeah. Hmm. And, uh, you know, they we like we said, we knew who, who the, the little skirmish was between as uh, Duncan and, and Logan Blackburn were kind of tangled up on this side of the field. So, again, that happened away from, away from the action. So the personal foul will bring the ball well back, 15-yard walk-off back to Mattoon's 44-yard line, so penalty at the 29. So a 15-yard walk-off. And all this has stopped the clock with 4.04 remaining. They still gave Effingham the first down on the play, though, was on the three-yard pickup for Baker, and then the new set of downs makes it. So first and 10, and the Hearts at Mattoon's 44. Thompson up under center, looking to throw this time. Going deep, got a man. It's caught out there in about the 20-yard line and the race to the end zone. And shout out to Holden Lewis, his second touchdown of the night. So it doesn't really matter about the penalty as it turns out. Effingham just gets a nice little seam route over the middle, and Holden Lewis catches his second touchdown of the game. And Effingham is going to win. I think you can feel safe in saying that now, without a doubt. So it's 27 to nothing on the pass play to Holden Lewis. So the senior having a big night tonight. Bo Hefner going to try for his fourth extra point of the night. Kicks up, looks good to me. The officials agree. It's 28 to nothing Effingham, and then a flag after the kick. Yeah, getting a little chippy. Getting a little chippy down there. Middle of the field, uh, some extracurricular activity. I'm guessing that'll be assessed on the kickoff. So, 347 remaining in this one. It's Effingham 28, Matt to nothing. Kickoff on the way in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Evergreen Nursing and Rehabilitation Center is proud to announce their new outpatient therapy. Evergreen now offers physical, occupational, and speech therapies for their patients. If you need therapy, don't worry. Evergreen's outpatient therapy can help you too. Give Evergreen a call today for a tour. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Keller Drive in Effingham will find a car that works for you. Check out their selection of cars and trucks today. All right, there's a first down, obviously, and they'll assess, or a penalty, rather, they'll assess it on the kickoff, and it's on Mattoon. So Effingham is going to kick off from Mattoon's 45-yard line. The Green Wave are not going to have good field position here. And it looks uh, looks to me like we have uh, Armando Estrada doing the kicking this time. From the 45, end over end, <laughs> gets kick. inside the 5, Matt Toon takes it to the far side of the field. Oh, no. and oh, my goodness, what a hit. Oh, my gosh. That was heroic. And Stoney still had a little gas left in his tank. And that was some whack. And that was Johnson was yeah. running that football. He says, that wait a kid. minute. Yeah, I mean, that was a perfect kick from Estrada, kicking from the Matt Toon 45, so he doesn't have to give a full-out boot. He puts it on the two-yard line, and Johnson just got destroyed as he tried to make that return. My goodness. Eight plays, 80 yards, 322 on the drive. Holden Lewis again caught a 44-yard touchdown pass from Nate Thompson. Bo Hefner's kick was good, and the Hearts are up 28 nothing now with 335 left in the game. Matt Toon has it first and 10 at their 10. And the hard-working quarterback, Jackson Spurgeon, back to work up under center. Hands it off. Johnson coming to the near side. The Hearts are having none of that, and down he goes for a loss. Jacob Logan comes to call. Johnson just yeah. got to be about this, to have a fit. Yeah, this game can't get over soon enough for these kids on the Mattoon uh, offensive unit. They're 
I'm taking some punishment here. That's a loss of three. Johnson really demonstrative out there. And I can't say as I blame him. Well, and I just think it's a case of getting worn down. You know, I think uh, Effingham is a, a deep roster. We've seen them with a little, a few more kids on their roster than most of the teams that they've played. They're able to, to go have guys not have to go both ways, and it just seems like it tends to really start to work out for them in the second half. So loss of three back to the seven, second down. Mattoon runs the ball, and they run it up the middle. Got maybe back to the ten which is still about a yard shy of the original line of scrimmage. That's Johnson again. He did get it to the 10, a gain of three. So now it's third and 11 for the Wave at their 10, and we're down to 225 left in this one. We'll talk with Coach Hefner on the post-game show. Dustin's going to have lots of stats on this one, plus scores, so stick with us on the post-game show. All right, third and 11 for Mattoon at their 10. And they trail by four scores here. There's the snap. They run it up the middle. Mattoon saying, I think we're just going to run the ball and let the time elapse. Yeah, I think they at least got a different back with the with the carry that time. Because mm -hmm. Johnson was in the backfield, but he jumped back. Hmm. Okay, I thought that was Johnson. <laughs> anyway... It's still at the 10. No gain. And it's fourth down. And we're down to a minute 35 to go. So Mattoon's going to go for it. Because why not? Yeah, that is Johnson still in the backfield. So they split the backs on either side of the quarterback. He is going to throw. Spurgeon out here. And it's caught. Nice grab out across the 20-yard line. Enough for a first down. Good grab by Dylan Burton for the first down. He needed about... 12 and he got 13. So move the chains. Mattoon gets one more first down and the momentum carried him out of bounds so the clock stops with a minute 18 to go. So the ball at the 22, gain of 12. And it's first and 10 for Mattoon. But again, just a minute 18 left and Effingham in front here 28 to nothing. Spurgeon back up under center on first and 10. Handoff, that's Johnson. Busts it across the 25. Decent gain. And it is to the 27. So a gain of five. And it's second and five. And we're down to a minute to go in the game. Hart's going to 3-0 and on the season. Didn't even know if we'd have football. And so far it's been a pretty fun football season. Spurgeon on what might be the last play of the game, looking to throw, gets it deep, got a man for the hearts, and Parker Wolf for the pick. That's a good way to close out the game. Parker Wolf stepped inside the Mattoon receiver. The intended receiver was Matthew Gordon, and Wolf stepped inside him and got the pick. Second interception of the game for Jackson Spurgeon on what's going to be his last throw, and Parker Wolf adding to the interception total. They'll mark it at Effingham's 47 yard line. So, first and 10 for the Hearts at their 47 with 42 seconds left in this one. Nice job, Parker went way up to get that. Nice interception for Kid who is a record setter at that sort of thing. And Nate Thompson takes the knee, and that should be the show. Might have to run one more play. We'll see how quickly or how diligently they enforce that, and I think they've decided they're not going to enforce that. Well, I think they're saying we need to get these kids <laughs> off the field because there were a few words exchanged right before everything, everything split up, although... Stoneburner's still out there having some friendly goodbyes with some of those guys on the field. and He's just a great kid. Yeah. He's just a great kid. And so he, now they'll all line up and wave at each other because that's what you do these days. And the clock down to nothing. Effingham a winner. They go to 3-0 and on this season. Effingham a winner over Mattoon at Mattoon. Final score, 28 to nothing. Dustin's stats. 
interview with Coach Hefner. We'll recap the scores from the area. It's all on the way on the postgame show. A quick reminder, CJ videotaped the game, so watch for it online later in the weekend on fate on uh, YouTube, and we'll have that up and rocking and rolling for you. Postgame show on the way in a minute here on 97.9 XFM. ProLube of Effingham is more than just your favorite oil change shop. We sell and install all major brands of tires. Check engine light on. We also perform diagnostic and repair work. Call or stop by today for a free quote at ProLube of Effingham. Local, secure, enduring, and more convenient than ever. Washington Savings Bank is located in Effingham, Mattoon, and anywhere you are with their 24-7 virtual branch. Enjoy the conveniences of banking with all the services offered at Washington Savings Bank. Member FDIC. This is the Pro Rehab Post Game Show. Pro Rehab is your best choice for physical therapy. Call 217-606-3004. All right, very good. Final score here at Mattoon High School. Effingham 28, Mattoon nothing. Hearts go to 3-0 and on the campaign with a big win. And let's recap the scoring in this one. It was all Effingham tonight, and it didn't start until the second quarter. First score came with 11-17 left in this one at the end of a nine-play, 80-yard scoring drive that took three minutes off the clock, highlighted by a 20-yard pass play from Nate Thompson to Parker Wolf. Bo Hefner's kick was good, and the Hearts had a 7-0 lead. They scored again in that second quarter, that one with 533 remaining at the end of a six-play, 52-yard drive that took a minute 55 off the clock. Highlighted by Chase Woomer's seven-yard touchdown run, Bo Hefner's kick was good, and the Hearts were up 14 to nothing, and that's the lead they took to the locker room at halftime. Effingham scored again with 3.9 seconds left in the third quarter. That was a massive drive. 13 plays, 52 yards, took 542 off the clock. Highlighted by a nine-yard pass completion from Thompson to Holden Lewis. Hefner's kick was good, and Effingham was in front 21 to nothing. Hart scored one more time with 347 remaining at the end of an eight-play, 80-yard drive, took 322 off the clock, and that was a 44-yard touchdown pass from Nate Thompson to Holden Lewis. Hefner's kick was good. He was four for four tonight, and the Hearts win it 28 to nothing to go to 3-0 on the season. So really great job by Effingham. And uh, Mike Shackelford coming through again for us on the tackle sheet and let me run through that as we've run through the scoring and uh, thank Mike for taking care of that and I'm sure your son's listening if he had the chance tonight up in Wisconsin and as far as who got what on the tackle sheet Austin Herbeth oh my mercy what a night 12 tackles and that included one for a five-yard loss. Big night for Austin Herbeth again. Jacob Logan stepped up big tonight. We talked about him a bunch. He had eight tackles tonight. Nice night for Jacob. Also, Alex Boffman had two stops. Zach Slifer, big night, had nine tackles tonight. Also for Effingham, Trevin Benavides had five stops. Sean Cochran got in for two tackles tonight. Also tonight, one stop credited to Kalen Reardon. Also tonight, we talked about Jacob Stoneburner. He had an enthusiastic night. Stoney finished with nine stops tonight. And Gunnar Franklin, a good night tonight. Had five tackles for Effingham. Four tackles, pardon me, four tackles for Gunnar Franklin. And uh, had the interception, right, Dustin? Had the, had the interception, too. Parker Wolf had three stops along with the interception. And Logan Heil had two tackles. And also for Effingham, good night tonight for Gabe Keeney. He had five tackles and a stop tonight for Dalton Fox. So lots of heroes on the tackle sheet. And again, a sack credited to Austin Herbeth and a sack credited to Gabe Keeney. So congratulations, and again, thanks, Mike Shackelford, for the tackle sheet. That's a huge help, and that's a real big part of the game. And those guys 
wouldn't have the recognition. I mean, we'd do our best, but that really helps to have that tackle sheet. So thanks for the thanks for that help, Mike. All right, what else do I need to tell you? Need to tell you that in addition to that, Dustin's working on the stats, and there is a voluminous amount of stats on this game. Plus, Coach Hefner will be up to talk with us on the post-game show. Gail, I wonder, I know this is putting you on the spot, so I'll give you a second to get the headsets on. Why don't you update us with what scores you have at this point, okay? All right, late in the fourth quarter, Newton leads Flora 34-18. to Late in the fourth quarter as well, Paris ahead of Olney Richland County. It's Paris 37, Olney Richland County 14. Cumberland with a big win over Villa Grove Heritage, 34 to nothing. Casey Westfield leading Oblong late in the fourth quarter, 48 to nothing. And Sullivan Okaw Valley leading Shelbyville, last I heard, 23 to 16. And uh, as far as Major League Baseball, Marlins lead the Rays 4-2 to two in the top of the ninth. The Dodgers in the top of the fifth lead the Rockies 8 to nothing, And the Angels lead the White Sox top of the third 1-0. That's what I've got. Super. Thank you, Gail. Again, some games are not being played tonight, so we'll have <clears throat> scores on some Saturday games for you as well. So... Be sure to keep that in mind. Gail, yeah, let's go ahead and take a quick break, then we'll get stats from Dustin and a visit with Coach on the way in a minute. Again, 28 nothing. Hearts a winner here at Mattoon. More in a minute on 97.9 XFM. If it's been a minute, Gail, just go ahead and bring her on back. That's fine. Thank you. <clears throat> We're back at Gaines Field here at Mattoon High School. Final score again tonight, Effingham 28, Mattoon nothing. Hearts now 3-0. and Headed home for a two-game homestand. Next Friday night, it'll be Taylorville at Effingham. And we'll have that for you here on 97.9. Kick off at 7 o'clock. Then, the following week, it'll be senior night as it'll be Mount Zion at Effingham. And boy, the way it's shaping up, that could be for all the enchiladas. So, we'll, we'll see about that. And then the Hearts wrap up this six-game season, heading to Lincoln for the final game on April 23rd. So that's how this season's going to wrap up as far as who's playing whom, and we'll have them all for you on 97.9 XFM. Coach Hefner's still talking with the print media down on the field, and then he'll make his way up here to uh, visit with us. Of course, he knows his way around Mattoon, you know, in that his father-in-law, Gerald Temples, was a highly successful coach here for the Green Wave a few years back. And uh, Brett spent some time, I'm pretty sure, on Gerald's staff here, so, so uh, well, he knows his way around. And just in case he can't make his way back up here, uh, CJ's gone down to... <laughs> To, to round him up and get him up here to the third. I think we're, we're second or third floor of this skybox here. I think I think maybe we're on the second floor. I think we're so. the second floor. It's a it's a pretty pretty impressive thing that they've got going on here in Mattoon. I, uh, any other place we've ever been, I've never seen anything quite like it. Of course, they, they do things here a little differently here this year, but yeah. uh, generally a lot of a lot of good loyal Matt Toon football fans up in this uh, up in this part of the part of the field. Yeah, they ran out spaces here in most seasons, but in this COVID season it's left to the broadcasters and the field crew and scoreboard operator and announcer and the, and that like. So we had plenty of space tonight. Yeah, it worked out for us okay. Yeah. Whole booth to ourselves. I'm not gonna complain too much. And then we get to go back to the friendly confines you for bet. a couple of weeks where 
I, I you know offense to anybody else, but nobody nobody treats us any better than they do there in Effingham. And then, you know, Lincoln's a long trip, but uh, pretty good accommodations there too. So mm-hmm. we can't complain too much. We no. we certainly can't. I think we ended up broadcasting outside at Lincoln, didn't we, two years ago? I you know, but I think I Coach know. Alexander, he was the last one there with us. That, that's he, right. He I, came up. Remember, shot the breeze. With I us get Lincoln. I get Lincoln and Macomb mixed up because yeah. we had a couple of years ago. We had a couple of really long road trips. <laughs> So, anyway. Yes, we did. Nobody, no, nobody cares about this stuff. Well, you never um, know. You but, know. Uh, but what they do care about is that Effingham outgained Matt Toon 325 to 150 tonight. Hearts ran 54 plays from scrimmage. Matt Toon ran 54 plays. But Effingham picked up 175 more yards. Wow. That's how you win 28 nothing. Wow. Effingham had 18 first downs tonight, 11 on the ground, 6 through the air, 1 by penalty. Uh, compare that to just a half dozen for Matt Toon. Six first downs for the Green Wave, three in the air, three on the ground, and that's it. Uh, Matt Toon, you know, they ran the ball a little bit. They ended up with 92 rushing yards, but only 24 in the second half. Uh, 24 rushing yards in the second half on 15 carries. That's 1.6 yards per attempt. For the game, 92 yards on 39 attempts for just 2.4 yards per carry. Uh, Contrast that to Effingham, 35 running plays for 170 yards. That's 4.8 yards per carry and a touchdown. And quite honestly, on a night where the Hearts didn't run the ball as well as maybe they uh, maybe they had the first couple of weeks, but they did pick it up in the second half. Uh, 112 of those 170 yards came in the second half on 22 carries. That's over five yards per attempt. Uh, one touchdown, of course, uh, coming on the ground for Effingham. Effingham put the ball in the air 19 times tonight, 11 times successfully, once intercepted, but three of their four touchdowns came in the passing game, 155 yards. Uh, By contrast, Matt Toon, 15 pass plays, eight completed, two intercepted, just 58 yards, and and quite honestly, 58 is a lot more than you might have expected. They had only three passing yards at halftime, so they got a little bit more done in the second half. Uh, Turnover-wise, Effingham turned it over once. They lost a fumble tonight, but Matt Toon, three turnovers, two by interception, one by fumble. Uh, Penalties, Effingham penalized five times for 35 yards tonight. Matt Toon, six times for 55 yards. Uh, Time of possession, just to show you that that doesn't always exactly dictate how the game is going to go. Matt Toon had the football 25 minutes and 32 seconds tonight. Effingham, 22 minutes and 28 seconds. But, of course, Effingham with the dominant performance in every other aspect. Uh, we'll get through these individual stats real quick. Uh, Ja'Kai Johnson, 96 yards on 29 carries for Matt Toon tonight. Uh, Zachary Schick, 19 yards on 6 carries. Jackson Spurgeon, the Matt Toon quarterback, lost 23 yards on 4 attempts. Uh, three of those were sacks. Uh, Spurgeon passing the ball, 8 for 15, 2 interceptions and 58 yards. He found uh, Nate Eldridge 3 times for 18 yards. He found Matthew Boy, I my own handwriting escapes me sometimes. Matthew Gordon, two carries or uh, receptions for 25 yards. Dylan Burton, two catches for 12 yards, and Logan Blackburn caught a pass for three. Uh, punting. Burton was busy in the first half. Five punts in the first half for 152 yards. That's a 30.4 yard average. He did not have to punt in the second half. Uh, Burton also had a punt return for four yards, a kick return for 18 yards. Uh, Ja'Kai Johnson, two kick returns for 25 yards. Jackson Spurgeon, a six yard kickoff return. Uh, Logan Blackburn, 27 yards on a kickoff return. And uh, Zachary Schick had a fumble recovery. Aiden Spurgeon, a 19 yard interception return return and i will get to these effingham stats in a minute because we have been joined up in the press box by coach hefner so i'll turn over the headset we'll get you those effingham individual numbers here in just a little bit thanks dustin again the final score 28 nothing hearts a winner three and oh on the campaign now and coach brad hefner joins us on the post game show first of all congratulations on the win thank you thank you happy for our kids um happy we were able to ever get out here to win uh it was going to be difficult. They're very well, very well coached and, and, and schemed up, and um, had a good plan coming in. It took us a little bit to get going, but we finally got going. I'll admit, 
I didn't know what to expect in this game. I've seen how well Effingham's playing, but Mattoon, big win, coming off the momentum of the pick to get the touchdown, to get the win last week, and I third home, and I'm thinking, hmm. And then yeah. the way the game started, yeah. I thought, well, this could be a battle. Yeah, no, they, they did a good job. They did a good job. Uh, similar, similar to what they did to, to Mount Zion, slow the game down, run the, run the play clock down, try and limit possessions run the ball and, and, and they they threw a couple things formationally at us that we hadn't seen um, did a nice job and got us um, you know had us had us on our heels a little bit um, until we were able to uh, coach stop those guys got them adjusted and we did a nice job um, once we made the adjustment uh, of going and, and defensively we were settled in there pretty good offensively offensively from them we'd always seen four down and we came into the game we got five down and doubling Tristan and doing some things there they did a nice job had a nice game plan and again you know it took us a little bit to adjust and um, but uh, kids did a nice job you know we talked about it after the game you know just just keep playing just keep playing just keep playing put your head down keep playing we'll get it figured out we'll, we'll sort it out and, and they'll sort it out and the kids do a good job of sorting it out and and, and so that's kind of what we did I know Tristan had a big game a couple of weeks ago but I think overall this might have been the best night for the passing attack that I've seen so far this year. You know, well, we've talked about it, Greg. You know, you, you and I talked about it. I've talked to anybody that listened. We talked about it last year, you know. And at his position, if somebody wants to take you away, they can take you away. Mm-hmm. They can commit two people to you and, and take you away, and that's fine. And it forces other guys to make plays. Well, we're fortunate that we have Parker. We're fortunate that we have Holden. We're fortunate that we have, you know, we we got guys that can make plays. Dalton Fox can make plays. Connor Thompson can make plays. You know, we've got guys that can catch the ball. And, and Nate's getting better at throwing it and a little bit more comfortable. And, um... You know, Parker. Parker was able to get loose tonight with some big catches and and uh, kind of get us going a little bit, which 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 is nice. Happy for him. Yeah, great run after the catch mm-hmm. on that one, especially. That's nice because it's how you finish a run a lot of times too. You Correct. Know, not just catching the ball. Right. Yeah, yeah. And he's made. You know, he he was that guy last year. A big catch here, a big catch there. You know, and 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 that was him, man. So uh, yeah, happy happy he was able to get going tonight. I thought Nate was was pretty good for the most part tonight and getting better each week. So. You know, hopefully, hopefully that continues. And you, again, got good ground gaining. Uh, Chase early, and then Trevor, and then Keegan at the end. And, man, nothing wrong with having three threats. No, there's nothing. We, we've, got, we've got a number of running backs, and, and, and they're all, you know, they're all, uh, all pretty good. All do a nice job. And, and uh, um, you know, they did a nice job up front on us. Took us a little bit to get going. We got to get a little bit better at, at finishing, finishing some things off. But, uh, but yeah, we'll we'll take a look at film tomorrow. But uh, it's like I told those guys, it's hard to it's hard to stay patient when you're not used to having to. And 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 sometimes you you, know, you just got to hang in there and, and, and keep playing. And, and I was proud of our guys for that. I think takeaways might have been as big tonight as any game so far. Yeah, it was it was big. We'll give Gunner grief tomorrow about his. You know, <laughs> somebody asked me about that and I just you know, but it's just ingrained in those guys. Go up and play the ball and make a play. You know, yeah. he has a chance to make a play, he makes a play. You know, they're not they don't care if it's first down, fourth down, it doesn't matter. So, you know, but happy he got an interception. Parker got one. Parker got one there. So um, yeah, take takeaways takeaways have been big for us so far. And tackles, you know, we talked about Stoneburner, we talked about Herbeth. Uh, tonight, though, gosh, Zach Slifer, I don't yeah. know, somebody had a dozen. I just ran through the well, list. I, you know, Trevin was in on him. Sean Cochran was in on him. Yeah. Kenny was in on him. Jacob Logan was in on him. Yeah, and, and those guys, it's like everything else. That's the crime crime of it for these guys because we thought going into it, we thought we thought we had a chance to be pretty good mm-hmm. on that side of the ball, and they're starting to kind of hit their rhythm a little bit. And, and uh, But, yeah, I, uh, the way they settled in and played after the first couple series was pretty impressive. It's uh, nice, too, because we had such a good road crowd tonight. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing when you, people are allowed to go places <laughs> where what, what happens. Uh, they'll, show, they'll show up and go. Um, so, yeah, no, it was great. It was great to, to hear them. It was great to have the support. It was, uh, um, you know, hopefully we can get a – it would be nice to, to get a few more back out at, at Klosterman Field these next two weeks and, and uh, get some good weather and, and have some fun. It three and zero, and and it's going so fast. I mean, we're halfway through the football season already. It, it, it's weird getting back to your preseason yeah. word. Uh, I think that's it proven is. to be yeah. pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> 
it, it's really been interesting. Now you have a two-game homestand, though, and two pretty salty opponents. Yeah, and it's, it's going to be fun. I mean, you get to this point in the year, and, and we talk about it. Anytime the schedule comes out, you hope to get to that point. Now we got a chance now where we got two home games, and, and you get Taylorville and Mount Zion, probably your two biggest rivals coming up, and you get them both at home. So, uh, so yeah, hopefully uh, – you know, hopefully we get a we get a great week uh, weather-wise, uh, so that we can get get some practice in um, and stay healthy and, and have a little fun. And see what happens. You made some changes on the special teams tonight. We had kids in different places than we were used to. Pontius, I guess, is healthy enough. So Tanner, Tanner, yeah, t- what it, what it allows us to do it allows us to um, uh, you know and Tanner Tanner punts and, and Trevin's been punting the ball well. But it adds us another another cover guy, so it's nice having Trevin to be able to cover, and and Tanner is a quarterback by trade, so now that gives you a few more options back there. So that was uh, that was the only reason, uh, only reason for that. And we we've gone into the season with that was the plan in mind, so. And the Hefner kid was four for four. Yeah, yeah, and and, and those poor guys that had soccer. They had soccer every week, every day, so they I couldn't come, they couldn't come over and practice. Couldn't come yeah. over. So, um, and and happy for Bo, and happy happy for him to get him him to get the you know opportunity. And he's he's done a great job. And and um, you know, but those guys, those guys. Uh, weren't able to get over, and it's just different timing, and and um, it doesn't affect the kickoffs any, but but the timing of the snap and the hold and the kick and all that. So, uh, so it's a, again developing depth and develop and having kids that multiple kids that can do things. Um, you know that's that's why you you want to build depth at, at every position, even there. You know, and all of a sudden we got two kids that can punt the ball. We got three kids that can do extra points and field goals. You know, we so which is a, which at at any level is a big weapon, but at our level especially. Very good, Brett. I appreciate the visit. Thanks, Congratulations Brett. on hey, Thanks, thanks. We're well, you know we're all 24 hours, and we'll worry about the next <laughs> one. You bet. <laughs> right, we'll see you, you next week. Always a pleasure. Arts football coach Brett Hefner. Final score again, Effingham 28, Matt 2 nothing. Arts now 3-0 and on the campaign. Gail, I'd like to send it back to you to see what you might have in the way of other scores, okay? And then we'll get back to Dustin for the heart stats. Okay, the finals that I do have, these are all finals. Newton over Flora, 34-18. to Paris over Olney, Richland County, 37-14. It was Cumberland over Villa Grove Heritage, 34-0. Casey Westfield, big win over Oblong, 48-0. Sullivan Okaw Valley, 23-0 to Shelbyville, 16. And Major League Baseball in the bottom of the ninth. It's the Rays 6, Marlins 4, top of the 6th, the Dodgers lead the Rockies 8 to nothing and bottom of the 3rd, Dustin will be happy to know the White Sox lead the Angels 4 to 1. All right, very good. Thank you. I appreciate you getting us up to date, Gail. I want to hear these numbers for the Hearts. Yep, let's uh, we promised you some Effingham stats and we've got them. Uh, Leading rusher tonight for Effingham, Trevor Donsbach, 71 yards on 16 carries. Uh, came in and had a really good second half for Effingham. Uh, Keegan Baker, not bad himself, 46 yards on six carries there at the end of the game. And Chase Woomer, uh, most of his work done in the first half. In fact, all of it, I believe, done in the first half. 44 yards on 11 carries. And, of course, he uh, contributed the lone rushing touchdown for the Hearts tonight. Uh, and then Nathan Thompson. Had a 10-yard run in this game, then had to kneel. Lost a yard on that one, so he uh, check in, checks in with two official rushing attempts and nine yards for the night. Uh, speaking of Thompson, 155 passing yards. He was 11 of 19 throwing the ball tonight. One, inter- one interception, but three touchdowns. So great night for uh, Nate. Uh, two of those touchdown passes going to Holden Lewis. Uh, he had three catches total for 53 yards. Uh, the last two going for nine yard and 44 yard scores after his first catch of the night was uh, for no gain. And then Parker Wolf, he was your leading receiver in terms of yardage, 94 yards on four catches, uh, including a 20-yard touchdown snag. Uh, all of that work done in the first half. Then some other guys getting in on the action. Uh, Austin Herbeth had a catch for three yards. He had Edgar Castillo catch a pass for five yards. And then Tristan Duncan and uh, Trevor Donsbach each caught passes as well uh, for, for no yardage back to the line of scrimmage. So kind of an interesting thing there. You had three different completions that went for no yardage, but uh, six different receivers getting in on the action. And I think that... Uh, 
probably speaks to the fact that uh, Nate Thompson get a little more comfortable seeing the field a little more, making some reads, you know, and and also that they're opening up the playbook a little bit more, and uh, just uh, just good to see Holden Lewis get himself in the end zone a couple of times tonight, and of course Parker Wolf with one of his uh, one of his bigger bigger receiving nights we've seen, probably quite possibly a career night for him catching the ball. Uh, you guys talked about Tanner Pontius uh, during the interview just then. He ended up punting the ball three times, uh, 113 yards on those three punts. That's a 37.6 yard average, and that is good. He did a great job tonight, and and consistent too, because uh, every every kick was right in that neighborhood. He had two punts in the first half for 77 yards, and then uh, 36 yarder in the second half. So very consistent, uh, 40, 37, and 36 on his three punts. Gunner Franklin and Parker Wolf, an interception apiece. Sean Cochran with that fumble recovery. Let's not forget that uh, Trevor Donsbach had a 17-yard kickoff return tonight. And I think that will just about do it. So, again, Effingham with the 28-0 win. We'll reiterate one more time. They outgained Matt Toon, 325-150 to tonight. They ran the exact same number of plays, uh, more than doubled them up offensively, and uh, shut them out. Always, you know, they came so close to, to getting that shut out the other night, mm-hmm. and it kind of and that evaporated right there at the end of the game. You know, when you've admittedly, you know, got a few new faces out on the field, and the other teams just really playing not to get shut out, but this time able to to get the job done. And Effingham's defense, just for the third straight week in a row, has has been more than uh, more than a lot more than the opposition can handle. Absolutely, Dustin. Thank you. Final score again, Effingham 28 and Matt 2 nothing. So we're home for the next two weeks, home to Taylorville this next Friday night. Kickoff at 7 o'clock at Klosterman Field. And, of course, we'll have it for you right here on your home for Hearts Football, 97.9 XFM and 97.9 XFM.com. Thanks again to Dave Veith and everybody at Mattoon High School for their hospitality. Thanks to CJ for getting all the video captured, and that'll be up over the weekend. Be sure to check it out tomorrow, he tells me. And thanks to Gail Warner back at the studios. And as always, thank you, Dustin White. Yeah, it's uh, we're at the halfway mark already. It's uh, it's uh, strange to say that after week three, but it is what it is, and should be a couple of fun games coming up uh, at Klosterman Field the next two weeks. We've talked a lot about them, but that's because they are not only uh, tantalizing matchups, but because they are important ones. And uh, the Apollo Conference Championship gonna come down to come down to probably coming away with a couple of wins there and. I think Effingham's good enough to do it, but it's not going to be easy, and uh, playing against those two programs is never a walk in the park. That's Dustin White. I'm Greg Sapp. Again, the final, Matt Toon and Effingham tangled here at Matt Toon. Hearts pitch the shutout. Final score, Effingham 28, Matt Toon nothing. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Premier Broadcasting Incorporated.